I don't even know what to fucking say. I don't even know what to say. I don't either. Vegan cheese. That's what I know what's going what to say. What about vegan cheese, Keith? Some of it's pretty good. Uh is it as good as real cheese? I don't really like cheese in general, but it doesn't make me. Yeah, but you drove all the way to Brooklyn for cheese. It was Manhattan, actually. I'll fucking kill you, dude. <laughs> I will stab you in the face with a hot soldering iron. <laughs> fucking god damn it. <laughs> anyway, uh, how you doing? Grand old people of the internet. So we're going to be doing a massive online bottle share. We're going to be covering a wide gamut. Not really. We're going to be covering a lot of different beers today from the same company. We're This is the online bottle share where you guys get to sit around and drink with us and then we'll yammer and all that fun bullshit. Um, and we pick a beer. You guys vote on that beer uh, and uh, we drink that beer and you guys get to review it along with us. We're going to be doing Dogfish Head 120. Um, uh, the first couple um online bottle shares that we had we did you know we did a belgian golden ale we did an imperial stout um we did like a season um and i kind of want to do something hoppy so i got the kind of the thought my brain holes to do a ipa and i figured screw it let's do it let's just pick a dogfish head one because that's the whole thing about this is that these should be beers that all you guys want should be able to get. That way you can actually procure them, kind of sit down and drink along with us. So I figured just put up the whole hoppy line. Well, the base core hoppy line of uh, Dogfish Head, which is their 60, their 90, their 75, and their 120. And uh, you fucking people picked 120. Like, I did not think you're going to pick 120. I don't know if they did this just because they want to see us chug fucking 120. But you guys picked 120. Like, I thought 60 or 90 was going to, like, run away with it. I thought um, it was going to be 90. Because 90 is, like, a little more than yeah. 60. And it's, but it's not 120. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, I was like, you know, you guys pick fucking 120. So, we're going to do 120. So, we have a bottle of 120 here. Um, but we, that is not all. We have two bottles of 120. We're going to be doing a little side-by-side -side of Dogfish 120. 2019 versus 2013. So we're going to have a six-year-old bottle. Um, we'll do that towards, we'll eat towards that because we're actually going to do 60 and 90 in this too. This is very much 120 focused. So that's the beer that we told you guys to get. But we said we'd get the whole gamut of beers. We'll run 90, 75, and 60, and then up into the 120. We didn't get 75. It was actually hard to find. Yeah. Which was kind of weird, so we're not going to be doing that. Now, just to give you guys a quick primer on what we're going to be doing here, we have the 2019-120, just to give you guys an idea of what we're drinking here. So that's your 120, a little bit murky, a little bit hazy. This is your 2013. <laughs> you, can't yeah. you can't see shit. <laughs> can't see shit, son. So just to give you a little teaser on a difference that six years can make on a beer. Um, yeah, and I just got to say off the get, I mean, you guys will probably – um, know this because I posted a video probably about a half an hour before this went live. Um, I actually didn't have an old 120 in my possession. Uh, so I was kind of like wanting to do this kind of side-by-side thing. I was trying to get a 2009, couldn't do it. I put the call out there to a couple different people, um, viewers of the channel and on Instagram. And Jordan uh, from out Pittsburgh way answered that bell um, and ended up sending off um, this 2013-120, so thank you very much, Jordan. Super cool of you to fucking uh, do that, and you know, what does he do? He goes one step further and actually sends off three other beers. He sent me a 2001 J.W. Lee's Harvest Ale. Oh, that doesn't suck. And then he sent me a Vale like Triple Hazy, and then he <laughs> sent me, maybe we'll drink this one on the air. He sent me a Strange Roots Hazy IPA. Oh, so it's uh, the new stuff. The newer, new stuff. Newer so stuff. we'll see what's what. We're going to be drinking a couple different beers along with the stuff <clears> we're going to be drinking now. We'll save the 120s um, for a little bit later in the show. Let some people kind of filter in, but we'll kind of start off with the uh, – we're actually drinking a little bit of Bon – was it Nemo? Nemo, Dark Mild. Tell us about the Nemo, Keith. You're so in tune with the Bon place. Keith lives, I don't lives at Bon place, basically. <laughs> He sleeps in another location, <laughs> but um, what is it like a three point five percent dark mile or something? Yeah, like that? it's sub four. I think it might be three point eight. 
a lot of their stuff is like 0.8. So I think it's it's good. I like it. I like anything that's like sub four, sub five percent. Right. Yeah, because I can drink all of it. Well, let's talk about that real quick. So Keith actually um, talk about low EBV beers. Keith actually um, is a fan of non-alcoholic beers. From yeah. Time to time. Yeah. I I don't consider them beer, but I like them. Mm -hmm. Like, and there are obviously some better than others. Some of them, as you have pointed out, just taste like they're kind of like some of them are like kind of uh, just kind of like flavored water kind of things, like hop hoppy water mm -hmm. stuff like that. Um, I'm not talking about like the actual hop water. I'm talking about like some of the, like the IPAs, the non-alcoholic IPAs. They're just like watery and they're not, I don't know. No, I, I, I do. <laughs> I know because <laughs> I just, I, I'm, I'm just fresh out of my healthy month. I, um, my wife convinced me to do a healthy month the day after we did our last show. Um, that's when my healthy month started. Uh, basically it was no alcoholic beer. I did drink, um, non-alcoholic beer a good portion of the time. There was a cheat day in there where me and Keith, Keith went down the conclave, drank a couple beers and stuff like that. But it pretty much, that was a good day. Yeah, that was a really good day. And a really great spot. I can't wait to <laughs> actually go back to conclave. But we, um, so I've been kind of off the beer, and, and but I have been drinking a lot of non-alcoholic stuff. And I mean, these guys, you saw me review them before, Athletic Brewing Company. Um, this is their non-alcoholic IPA run wild. This is kind of their flagship, I guess you would say, kind of IPA. This is one I see oh, in yeah, most yeah. places. Um, it, I reviewed this blind. This is the one I did blind, right? Uh, you can. You said I did the gold nail. I didn't. I did this one blind. I thought I thought you did do the gold nail. No. Because I thought, because didn't you call it an amber ale or whatever? No. No, he's wrong. Anyway, uh, I did this one um, blind, and I did not know it was a non-alcoholic beer. There's been other people, other people have tried to slip um, non-alcoholic beers by me from time to time into mystery beers, and um, I usually catch them. This one I did not, so I drank a, a good portion of this. Um, I uh, I drank some. Um, I drank a bunch of stuff. I tried pretty much anything I could find. I drank, um, there was some that were kind of meh. Um, the Klaus Hosser, is that what the hell you say it? I, I call it Klaus, Klaus Taylor. Klaus, Klaus Taylor. That was kind of <clears throat> like, that wasn't bad, but it was the most readily available thing I could possibly find that was like, okay. I mean, Heineken Zero is actually not too fucking shabby. I actually yeah. don't mind that. So, probably my favorites of the bunch, though, um, were uh, oddly enough, PBR. Non-alcoholic is fucking delicious. I haven't had that one. Um, I kind of want to put a couple racks of that in my <laughs> house just randomly. Because sometimes I'll be drinking, playing video games, and I'm like, okay, I want to keep drinking beer, but I don't want to get tipsy. Yeah. And that's kind of where it comes in. And Bitburger Drive. Is, mm. I've I had that, that one. Beer. That one's good. And, and pretty much anything Athletic has done. There's a lot of breweries doing a non-alcoholic thing um, as of late. So it was kind of fun to ride down that road. I kind of – I didn't do any reviews – um, during that period, I was kind of at first, I was like, you know what? I'll take this time to actually sit down and do a bunch of non alcohol beer reviews. But it kind of got me kind of wanting to not do anything. Actually, not, not, I mean, not do anything in life, but um, not like step away from beer reviews, not do anything. So I didn't really do a beer review for almost a month. Um, and it was pretty fucking cool. You know, built a new gaming computer, um, played around with some music and stuff like that. And it got me into thinking uh, about doing that new segment that I posted about the other day about I pair beer with that kind of thing where I'm kind of talking about my favorite albums, music and stuff like that. So it'll be it, it kind of spawned a little bit of kind of interest in some other things. And it was kind of fun to step away from the beer reviews, to be perfectly honest with you. But, you know, old habits die hard. So we're back. So anyway, um, what else? What else are we going to talk about? Before we dive in, we should probably dive into one of these. So we can. We gotta finish this though. We're gonna dirty glass mop you this shit too, because I forgot to get water. So that's how we roll, son. Um, we gotta talk about a couple different things. We gotta talk about one, a couple racist events on on the internet. Don't use that one. If you want. <laughs> he's, he's like, what the fuck's up with that glass? It's all dirty and splotchy and stuff. It's just water spots. Fucking guy. 
Well, no, we got to save those for the 120 side by side, though. Oh, that's what those are for. No, I was just looking at it. Yeah, yeah we're going to talk about a couple like racist things in beer, um, brewery wise. Something that kind of affected my channel a bit. We'll t- touch on that. Uh, oh, yeah, sorry. Yeah, um, we got to talk about other half. Yeah, and guns. Yeah, <laughs> say what, son? I'm gonna shoot you. <clears throat> I think if there was anything else kind of beer wise that kind of went but hurt 450 north guys are still happening but that's not really a story yeah didn't a brewery the, sell didn't somebody sell for the past month uh a bunch of like inconsequential I, just, I shouldn't say inconsequential breweries sold at water brewing sold you ever have anything from at water they're like super readily available in Pennsylvania. I actually dug quite a few of their beers. If you actually go back to my old reviews, I see a bunch of Outwater stuff. Um, so are they the ones old. who do that? Uh, that like four twenty IPA or whatever. No, that's Sweetwater. Oh. Uh, Outwater, and I'll show you. I'll show Keith. You guys won't see it. Um, they do. When you see it, you'll probably be like, "Oh, okay, I know these guys." And then you'll see, like, that's their logo. And then that's their new labeling. You wouldn't really know much from there. Um, I mean, they do, like, uh, that's, like, that was, like, their Imperial, VJ Imperial Stout. Um, they do a bunch of different stuff. They're kind of like, um, you ever have stuff from, like, like a weird old school, new school brewery, like Duck Rabbit or something like that? Like, they're, like, that kind of weird yeah. brewery that kind of, like, was, like, popular for a minute, but kind of lost. Kind of like platform brewing, kind of, like, they're distributed. People would buy them, but people didn't flip out over them. Anyway, it is what it is. Mm. Back with a vengeance. So, let's see what's what. Anyway, I'm going to pop this. Give it a pour. And I'll jump back in the comments, see what you guys have to say. Do we both get one, or are we sharing this? We'll share it. Oh, no. I brought two out, because we got to get to that one twenty. So, I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> I gave... Keith, the best pour ever. Show him. Yeah. <laughs> two two different pours. It's almost the same amount of fluid. I just kind of threw his in there because I'm an asshole. Anyway, let's jump into the comments real quick. We have Bill Bach diving in saying, what's up, guys? What's going on? Bill, Arland, Ayo, Ayo, son. Um, uh, Hatchy Blatchy. I remember that from last time. Uh, hey, guys, <laughs> I'll check back with you after dinner and see how you guys are holding up. It's a 120 show. Might not hold up all that well. <laughs> we'll see what's what. What's up, everybody? From Michael Gibson. What up? And then we have Hatch Malachi. Keith already looked like a drunk Mark Ruffalo. Oh boy, <laughs> Dude, how, well, that was the quickest Mark Ruffalo re- <laughs> reference in, in the history of the live bottle shares. Um, third time watching your live jams. First time I get to share. I've been drinking a 2018. Just got done with the juice machine. Garbage. LOL. Uh, that's kind of a weird kind of vertical. I'm going to drink a 120. <laughs> Oh, wait, I think he might have got done with the juice machine, and then he'll I'll be drinking in 2019. So, okay. I thought you were maybe doing it the cross way. Um, so, right? I'm reading that right. Just got done with the juice machine. I'll be drinking in 2018. So, you already drank the juice machine. Yeah. I thought you I drank 121st, so. which would have been awesome because you wouldn't have tasted anything afterwards. Um, but that's pretty awesome. They actually have one to drink long. Kind of like clown shoes. Weird beers that uh, people buy but don't rave over them um i can't believe i'm gonna say this zach what's going on homie i think fucking clown shoes makes better beer than that water i like at <laughs> water's beers and i'm not a big fan of clown shoes but clown shoes can actually pull off something that i was like i'm really surprised this is fucking amazing yeah. at water's never made anything amazing but they've never made anything bad now i've had clown shoes beers on like this is fucking <laughs> garbage so there's been higher yeah. peaks and lower valleys <laughs> Atwater has never had that super high peak or the really low valley. So I kind of like it's clown shoes a little more in that sense because I would like to risk the yeah. high peak for that low valley. Man, I'm all yeah. ash. I like I put that lotion on. I haven't had a lot of clown shoes, but I've always considered liking them because the things that I've had I've liked. I just hate the name. It's kind of like Ass Clown Brewing out of like what is it, West oh, Virginia, or whatever. It's like they can I just the, I just saw something about them the other day. Yeah, they, can, they can make the best beer in the history of mankind, but they're just like they're called Ass Clown. You know what I mean? It's like it's like yeah. calling yourself separatist ale. See, it's just you're a piece of shit if you do that. It's just you know. Oh, are we drinking? This? Oh, yeah, we're gonna drink this. We're gonna dive into the sixty real quick. 
Smells like hops. It smells like beer. It smells beer. like a malty West Coast style with a little bit East Coast flavoring. As I'm getting caramel malts, I'm getting bittering kind of slightly piney, but not over West Coasty kind of vibes. And then 60, and then a little bit of subtle sweet citrus. I mean, it's not anything over top. It smells sweet and that and kind of brown sugar mixed with white sugar kind of thing going on. Yeah. Well, you said best color man in the business. <laughs> Cheers. Clear beer, by the way. I'm drinking clear beer. It's garbage. I forgot how good this is. Yeah, it's pretty good. Yeah, this is really good. I can drink like 70 of these. 6%. So it's not that big of a beer. Really? Is there a date on the bottle? There is. I, I know for a fact because I got the freshest one I could possibly find. And this is just a hair over a month old. So I picked up a six pack of this on my way back from my vacation. I was down in the uh, down Jersey Shore. That's right. I went to the Jersey Shore in February like an asshole. Um, now it was actually a really good time. It's actually a fun place to go during the winter time because the breweries all still open, but there's like half the amount of people. So you get to go wherever you want and do whatever you want. But um, driving back, oddly enough, um, I kind of joked about the 120 being easy to find i think on a previous video <laughs> i could not fucking find a fresh 120 on my ride home i had to resort to keith and he randomly popped in a random he looked at like three or four I, places i stopped at two places and then there's this one place on the way here that i was just like i've never been in there i don't know what's in there i'm just gonna stop because i'm literally driving right past it and they had like half a case <laughs> yeah so this, I popped into a place, I picked up a six of this, I picked up a uh, sixer of 90, and then I just made a quick, like, loop around the place to see, like, okay, see if they have 75 or 120, trying to find it, trying to find it, and I went to the case section, like, they had, like, the like the non-six-pack section mm -hmm. where you purchase cases, but then they had a case with a couple six-packs on top of, it, of this, they were, like, a month fresher, I was like, ah, eh, fuck, <laughs> switch those out. So I was kind of excited for this. Now the '90s, I think I have are even fresher. Um, yeah, these are these are like two weeks old. So I'm kind of excited to kind of crack them in the <laughs> '90s, see how those hold up. But as far as this beer goes, I mean, it's 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 what you'd expect from a melding of old school East Coast and West Coast, and really drinkable. I mean, it's not overly sweet. Uh, it's not overly bittering. It's way more bittering than what you'd expect from a new school beer, but I don't think it's overly yeah. bittering in general. But it's like, I don't know. Carbonation's nice. It's drinkable. Yeah. It's not heavy. It's not overly sweet. It's malt forward, but not overly hefty. No. It's bittering enough and packful enough from the bittering sense it's not like it's not like I could drink like four of these really qu in quick succession yeah. and be like, nothing's wrong with my palate. That was really <laughs> easy to drink. Let's move on to the next one. Like, yeah, this is a really, really tasty beer. And, you know, diving into this, <clears throat> this kind of uh, online bottle share and running this kind of gauntlet of, of dogfish head beers, I wasn't sure if I was going to dig it all. You know, I was kind of really kind of looking forward to the 120. Um, and, and definitely the comparison side by side of the 120s, but um, I was kind of hesitant a little bit. But I was like, okay, this is a nice kind of kickoff, so that's pretty fun. Anyway, um, that's the 60. So there you go, nice maltiness to it, yeah. but not too heavy. A nice yeah. uh, hoppiness to it that means a little bit decently bittering, but not over the top. Super drinkable. Anything else? No. This is. I don't drink a lot of hazy IPAs anymore, but this is super refreshing. As an IPA, you don't get a lot of IPAs like this. No, let's put it. And this is probably my the best way I could put this is that before drinking this sixty because it's been so long. You know when you go to that like um, the airport or you go to a fucking like McApplebee's, whatever the fuck you want to call it, <laughs> like cheesy like chain place, and they have like. Blue Moon, blah, blah, blah. They always have mm -hmm. Dogfish Head and Lagadies, whatever. Mm -hmm. And then you look through that list of draft, and there's 60 on there, but then there might have like something else that I'm cool with, like Stella. I always drink Stella. I have no problem drinking Stella. Whenever it's on, I'm like, just give me that. If there was like Stella 
in like fucking like you know Miller High Life and then like Jenny Cream and all because that would be on a high end place. But you get what I'm trying to say. When this was there, I would be like, I'll give me a fucking give me a high life, give me a sell it. Tomorrow, if I went to that same place, I'd be like, you know what? Give me a yeah. fucking 60. Like yeah. that's the difference. Hey. Is that now I'm like, <laughs> I think I might try to drink a 60 when it's on draft next time I'm at one of those places. So that in and of itself is cool because it kind of changed my perception of it. And that's one of the funnest things about doing these online bottle shares. Since we go out of our way to find a beer that everybody can get, we let you guys vote on it, which is kind of makes it even better. So it's not something that I pick. I'm like, I can get good and Carlos fucking blue whenever I want. I'll do one of those. And like 18 other people are like, no, dude, we're going to be doing that soon. By the way, we're going to do a vertical that it's not going to be one of these shares, but uh, next weekend, maybe. We'll talk about Maybe, it. Yeah. Uh, Maybe we'll talk about it. Anyway, we have a vertical of what is, we'll talk about it later. Anyway. Uh, um, well, we can talk. Yeah, but not right now. Oh, Let's okay. talk about it like later in the show. Oh, okay. Um, and uh, <clears throat> I lost my train of thought. Anyway, well, uh, you, beers that you guys can get. Um, it lets us revisit beers that we haven't drank in a really long time. That we're I, like, oh, I haven't had this beer in like five years. Or that's what I'm like saying. That. So it's like cool to actually go back and try stuff and be like, wait a minute, there's a reason why I drank this a long time ago because it's actually really fucking good. It's a good beer. What can I say? Oh, anyway. So back to a little bit of news. So there used to be a guy called Don't Drink Beer. Well, he still exists. And he was the funniest meme shitlord on the internet. Um got a little bit more corporate nowadays a little bit more kind of paywall e trying to make a little bit of ducats which is fine but it seems to have lost a little bit of luster on what he's done i think the person who's kind of picked up that gauntlet of, of shit postery has been worse beer blog i think he's probably the funniest dude to kind of rolling right now when it comes to just fucking with people on the internet besides the Hayes boys yeah. and my boy george you know they're yeah. like george is just fucking anybody anyway <laughs> So he posts the general like hold my fries of the day when a brewery does some dumb <laughs> shit. And um, you know, he posted the thing about Hanging Hills Brewing. Um, they basically kind of posted um a kind of thing uh, saying giving the big middle finger to Andy No, who's kind of like a you know, a journalist in the loosest sense of the word. Um, and he kind of, you know, they kind of attacked him verbally. Um about like kind of basically saying, you know, Andy No can go fuck himself and we could throw hazy milkshake IPAs at his head, which is kind of a callback to like him getting a head by a brick or something like that. And it's something I don't know enough of this stuff to really comment intelligently. Now that being what it said, that brewery kind of attacked him verbally, not physically, um, and kind of just kind of, you know, if from a non-biased perspective basically it's a brewery who is more kind of human rights uh what you would say central leaning which would a lot of people would say left leaning because there's no such thing as left there's just i think it's more what would yeah, you say i don't uh i don't know i've heard people talk about it like how there's no left like left is center yeah but because the right is so far right yeah everyone thinks the center is basically right, yeah, and yeah. then anyway, that's yeah, not the it, conversation. It, it we're gets a little uh, yeah, convoluted. Con <laughs> anyway, well, that's not the conversation we're trying to have. Anyway, what basically happened was they kind of attacked or, or, or made fun of him in 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 messages, direct messages. For some reason, I forget the whole if ands or buts about it. Um, saying, you know, basically tell him dude to go fuck himself because the brewery is definitely more kind of progressive, kind of rights for everybody leaning kind of thing and you know uh, alt-right i'm not calling him alt-right but the alt-right and that kind of super far right kind of uh, who tend to be associated with andy uh kind of took that as a as as a, a bullshit kind of thing where how could you promote violence in that sense it is what it is now the wake of that is about a week prior to all this going down i actually posted a hang hills review um a buddy of mine uh, from up north, I believe it was Tyler um, from up north, um, sent me uh, Hanging Hills Pilsner, um, and I reviewed it. Uh, he sent it to me a couple months pre previous, and I reviewed it, and about a month later, I posted it, and a week later, all this shit went down. So 
you can actually go on to the Hang Hills um, review. I did the Hang Hills pills, and you can see somebody on there talking about like these are anti Antifa fucks and all that shit. <laughs> we looked at it right before I we went live, and basically it was a bunch of people started commenting on my Hang Hills beer review um, and just saying fuck this company. They have horrible moral values. Fuck this company. They are, they, they promote violence against journalists and all that fucking thing. And I just find that shit kind of funny because you can take, you know, how do I want to word this in a way that just isn't as, because I honestly, I'm, I don't, I'm not a big fucking perspective -y kind of guy. I'm kind of, I live in the middle of nowhere. I have a farm. I have cows. I'm going to butcher them. I'm going to eat them because I don't trust where my meat comes from. And I'd rather drink the water from my well. That's the world I fucking live in. You know what yeah. I mean? Like I just, I keep to myself, you know what I mean? But I also do have beliefs and whatnot, and I try to keep that se separated from my channel. But but since that kind of stuff in is more kind of since that stuff is more what's the word I'm looking for infiltrated my channel, and since it's something that came up, it's worth noting on. So here's the deal for anybody who watched that and ends up watching this and says I'm a piece of shit because I don't agree with them. I have no idea who this Andy no guy is really in the grand scheme of things. I haven't done the research. I have no idea who he is. If he's an awesome person and he's genuinely compassionate and he's genuinely a good person that cares about human beings and human beings across the board um, who aren't trying to hurt or belittle or demean people then that's fucked up that people fuck with him. But if he, you know, is a negative person or he holds court with negative people or is in some form or fashion, you know, like promotes or associates with negative people, then maybe he's a bad person. I don't know. That's my two cents of it. You know what I mean? And that's the one thing like that, like um, my wife is, you know, she's born in the United States, but you know, her father, and her mother, her grandmother, and, and her, all her relatives come from Germany. And the Germans have a saying, not to make this a Nazi versus not Nazi thing, but that's <laughs> the easiest way to kind of put it, is that, you know, there's an old saying that goes, you know, if 10 people are sitting at a table eating and one of those are Nazis, what do you have? You have 10 Nazis. You know what I mean? Like, you know, if you're sitting at a table, if you're associating with people and that person you're sitting with and breaking bread with and associating with is a Nazi or super alt-right or any of that stuff. And, and it, it's, you know, it's one of those things where if you associate it, I mean, we have Dylan Holt in the, in the conversation right now. Andy Doe is an ethnic minority and a homosexual. That has nothing to do with hating people. What does that have to do with any of that? Like if I were to like, that's a, I don't understand that conversation to have even, you know what I mean? I don't understand that conversation. Like you're just like, if someone, if someone, if someone is an ethnic minority and homosexual, does that mean they can do anything they want and get away with it? You ever seen that, uh, Dave Chappelle skit where the blind black guy is like the white power guy. Yeah. Yeah. That's kind of like that. Yeah. It's like, it's like you, the, you can have people who don't, who uh go against their uh own uh interests or whatever yeah. however you want to say it but no it's even uh, like people like <clears throat> just because i reviewed a beer from these people who were kind of fucking flipping on me and the same thing they were like he's an ethnic minority and homosexual well, guess what my ex-wife is asian and now she's gay and we're still good <laughs> friends like does that make me does it absolve me from <laughs> making these comments? Does it? Because that's the fucking truth. Do you know what I mean? Like, does that make everything okay now? No, it doesn't. You know what I mean? So it is what it is. You know what I mean? The brass tacks is just be a good person. Be a good person. And if you are a good person, that's great. If you're a good person, but you hang out with a bunch of shitty people and help those shitty people be shitty people, but at the same time, present yourself as a good person or a good person while you're not with those shitty people, you're still a shitty person because you're enabling shitty shittiness. You know what I mean? It's not complicated. So it is what it is. You know what I mean? Fucking, you know, people are people. Yeah. There we go. We'll just block Dylan from this whole thing. Anyway, um, <laughs> I just got, I'm not going to fucking do it. You know what I mean? Back I was, to beers. I, I was going to say, congratulations. I had to address it because <laughs> 
people kept talking about it, and I'm like, what the fuck? You know what I mean? Like, listen, I'm, you know, there's, there's, there's like people like, um, you know, there's a meme out there. Oh, can I just bite you? Yeah, no. my dog, my dog, my cat just bought bit uh Keith because that happens all the time. Anyway, <laughs> you know, there's, 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 there's a meme that my, you know, friends have posted just like, you know, it's just, you know, some people are gun people. Some people are, you know, this kind of person. Some people are this kind of person. Like, it's just, there, there isn't a, I'm a this, I'm a that, I'm a that, I'm a this. It's not one end of the spectrum or the other. You know, it's just about being a generally good person. A lot of people have, uh, you know, like, you can, like, like shit that's good, but still be a shitty person. Like, a lot of people come up to me and be like, you're in a beer. I'm in a beer. We're boys. Be like, that's not how it works, dude. You know what I mean? Because, like, if you're awesome, if you're a good person, we'll be friends. You know what I mean? Just because you're in a beer or just because you're in a music, just because you're in a video game, just because you're in a Mark Ruffalo, doesn't mean we're going to be fucking friends. You know what I mean? So just be good people, man. Don't fuck around. Be a good person. You know what I mean? Respect people. Don't fuck with people if they want to be happy. If they're not fucking with your shit. And um, just, just try not to drink 13 Rosh beers in one sitting. That's all I fucking ask. <laughs> That's all I fucking ask. Anyway, we got to get back to the beer because uh, it is what it is. Actually, we got to get back to the comments and see what kind of shit show went down. One, uh, there, was, there was a shit show definitely fucking happening. Let's see what happened here. Um, let's see. Let's go back to the comments. Um, where were we? No, no, no. I think Clown Shoes was the last one. Yeah, Clown Shoes, okay. We have uh, Mike Good. What's up? Cracking my first of the day. Perfect timing. What up, Mike Good? Mike Good, man. That's what I'm talking about. That means bad, son. Is, um, wait, but is uh, is he doing a... He's a, cracking my first of the day. I think he means beer. I don't think he means 120. Okay. Um, we have... <laughs> uh, I dug the uh, Del, uh, Dark Stella. They re re released... I saw that, and I've actually wanted to try it. I'll have to find it because, listen, I'm not going to sit here and say Stella's an amazing beer, but, and this is where my love for Stella comes in, is that almost every single fucking oyster house I've ever been in has Stella on draft, and nothing pairs better when, with oysters than fucking Stella. Like, I will drink Stella and oysters all fucking day. So that's where I fucking love that shit. Zach's chiming in. Have you had Stella Dark yet? He actually talked about it. More malt followed, almost like a Bach, but a little bit more sweetness. Now I got to try it. Yeah. Um, uh, uh, Jay Porter's chiming in. Don't remember the last six I had. I don't. Before this one, I couldn't remember either. Uh, 710 Raider Nation. Cheers on about the Papa Cascade Apricot. He's on 13. That shit's delicious. Yeah. I cracked one. Did we crack one together maybe a year or so? I remember having that not too long ago. You're fucking winning right now, Raider Nation. I'll tell you that. Um, no hate beer reviews. Worst beer blog. And Hayes Boys fucked the world. That's right. Kyle I think, or I think sorry, Ryan the, chiming in. Or did he mean for the win? For the win? Fuck it's fucked the world. The world. Oh. It, no, that still means the same thing. Oh, okay. Like these people fucked the world, like in a good way. It's like saying bad but good. That's the way I always took it. I don't know what the kids are. I know for the win. I don't know what the kids are into these days. I don't I know it's different for both. I just I always say I don't know. Zach <clears throat> says don't tread on me. I, I don't know what that means. I know what it means, but I don't know which way you mean it. Um that skit was hilarious. What can I say? We're very fuck oh I thought you were saying we're hilarious. He's talking about fucking Clayton Bigsby. Yeah. Um <laughs> Keith needs to start a political channel. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that needs to fuck happen. <laughs> uh like African American conservatives get ostracized by other African Americans. Like if you're a certain race, you can't think differently. I get what you're saying. Um, but at the same time, it's not my place to judge because I'm not an African American. Um, and then we have Rod chiming in. Cheers, Matt and all. What's going on, Rod man? Yeah, uh, if you want to go check out Rod, I should call him Ron because my 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 texts whenever when when Rod first started beer tubing and we text back and forth and I always called him Ron just cuz that's what would autocorrect when I was <laughs> typing on my phone um so I should call him Ron instead of Rod but uh that will chime back to the back back in the day baby uh, go check him out he has a really entertaining channel um you know hosts a lot of these live shows way better than I fucking do so if you want to check out somebody who actually does it well check that fucking guy out um and says you're indirectly supporting shittiness by hanging with shittiness you are but you aren't you you're 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 not indirectly you're directly doing it um because I think ignorance is how do I phrase this I think ignorance is 
just as bad when you're when you give a shit about the thing. So let's put it this way. I just said I live in a bubble, I live in a farm, I don't want to fuck with shit. That's technically me promoting ignorance. So I'm actually saying I'm ignorant to those things. Not that I don't believe in equality, and not that I don't believe in people just fucking get being good to each other. I mean, listen, build Ted's excellent adventure, watch it and live it. But fucking it, it gets to a point where you know, I don't know. I'm old. I'm 43. Sometimes I ain't got the fight left in me. I just want to hang with fucking people I dig, drink some beers, and hey, there's nothing wrong with that. But if you're doing that and being a shitty person by yourself, that is what it is. But if you're hanging with other people and being shitty while they're being shitty, but being nice when they're not being nice, then you're just that. That is what it is. Back to the beer. Um, anyway. <laughs> that reminds me of... Uh, I, saw, I saw a few of the... Uh, Beer people, the NEPA beer people yesterday. He means NEPA beer people as in northeastern Pennsylvania. Most yeah. people don't know what that means. <clears throat> um, Where'd you, where? Uh, when I went to other half, I got a couple beers for people. So, Oh, just, okay. You were delivering. Yeah. Muling is what the kids call it nowadays. <laughs> um, and uh, the uh, Crocs came up. Crocs, for those that don't know, is the scourge of the semi-local beer scene. He's just a and he's just a hot garbage, hot garbage piece of person. Like, yeah, I, I don't I'm trying to talk shit, but that dude just poopy. Basically, the uh, hanging with bad people or whatever. The um, someone mentioned that he has actually been banned from breweries he's never been to. Oh, yeah, he's been because uh, because he's because been of the shit he's been. Barrel. What? <laughs> yeah, he's banned from Rare Barrel. Yeah, or is it Rare Barrel? Or I'm thinking of somebody else. It's somebody, one of those breweries. It's like, it's not Cascade, it's not Rare Barrel, but if there's like another uh, one of those and I'm uh, not thinking, yeah, this dude has been banned from breweries he's never been to. That's how he's shit tastic this dude is. Yeah. Like, he's like, literally, like, there's a brewery by us called Breaker Brewing. Um, really nice brewery, really nice beers. Um, you know, not setting the world on fire shit, but just the dudes who own the place are fucking so nice. Like, they're the nicest dudes. The nicest guys you will ever meet in the world, and they make beer, and that's their living. Like they've, they've had their brew pub for they're probably going on ten years. I'm thinking, if not that, very they've close. Been, they've been open that long. Yeah, they've been oh. open for a very long time, but they take it slow, and it's not that they take it slow because they're conservative with their beer choices. That you know, they're they're two dudes with two families, and they got mouths to feed, so they never kind of they were very hesitant to kind of go all in on a lot of different beers but now they're you know starting to brew a lot of the newer stuff he got banned from that place you know what i mean like to get 86 from breaker like he well, like in the, the, the story he is... pissed on their wall he fucking like forgot a case of beer and it gave a free case of youtube because he forgot it but he probably took it home and just lost it like he's like he's yeah. like literally peed himself at breweries you know, like he, it's it's just a absolutely hot garbage thing. Yeah, he got banned from Martellus too. Yeah, he's it, never been there. Yeah, and here's the thing about that. And this is kind of the thing. And this might actually some people might watch this and might think I'm being kind of a douchebag. And I get it because some people are just trying to be nice. But there's a lot of people in the NEPA group who will trade with him still because he goes out and gets beers. Oh yeah. And it's kind of like, but they're like, yeah, fuck that guy, but he gets me beers. But like, you're associating yourself with that kind of negativity. That's that's what I'm talking about. Like, you're you, like, that's when that's when you're like, when I said the whole like, you know, eleven people at a table, one of the Nazis, you have a, or, yeah. you, you have He's, fucking eleven Nazis. It's that mentality to where like, if you associate with negative, even if you don't like, oh, I just every now and then I hang with that guy. Well, then you're fucked up. He doesn't really do anything bad. He just doesn't give a shit. No, he so does, he does bad shit. Does he? Because he just it just seems like he's like fights several DUIs, has has fought, tried to file like I know somebody who got a I know somebody who made fun of him on the internet and made fun of him on the internet with shit he wrote on the internet. So there's <laughs> like it's not like he was like posting private shit. He was just like the same the thing he wrote on the internet, the guy reposted and said, look at this idiot. And had a had 
a summon sent to that person's work saying they were being sued for like fucking harassment. That's weird. To their work, not to them. That's yeah. That's fucking with people's lives. Now I understand, you know, tit for tat. You're fucking with somebody, they fuck with you back. I get it. But you know, you post some dumb ass shit on the internet and someone retweets it. <laughs> you put and put it out there, dude. <laughs> like you're not like it's not like you're saying this is private information. Like you said dumb shit, the person said, look at this dumb shit, and you're like, fuck this guy for seeing now that shit wouldn't hold in a quarter of water or a cold a quarter a quarter of law, and it wouldn't hold any water, as would the mighty Joe Pesci from fucking whatever that fucking movie is. Anyway, but it's also like sometimes you can do shit that can fuck with people's lives that don't mean much. So yeah. you send something like that to somebody's workplace, you know, you fuck with them. Anyway, we didn't even fuck with this. I already no. drank this beer and I didn't even talk about it yet. Huh. You know what this smells like? Smells, you know what this tastes like? It smells like floral. Yes. It's a very good descriptor. So we're moving on to the 90 minute. I like the 60 way better. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's it's sharper. It's definitely floral haunting. This doesn't, this doesn't taste the way I remember it. This might actually be better with a little bit of time. You know on what it. this reminds me of? Remember when I did that mystery beer and I couldn't think of what it was, and I opened it up and it ended up, I think it being, it was a wicked weed beer. Remember, right before we did the last show, maybe. Remember, it was a mystery beer, and I was like, oh, oh. yeah, it was a, yeah, what was that? Oh yeah, it was the IPA, but it was like, pre yeah. nature, maybe. Yeah, it was some, something. Yeah, it kind of reminds me of that, so it kind of makes sense. You know what I mean? Because it's probably similar kind of beer when it comes to like the end all be all of what it wants to be and what it's trying to be. But it's weird because I thought there was going to be a step up from 60 to 90. Like, I, like let's put it this way. I've had these beers several times before and mm. a ton of different fucking times, but it's been so long since I've had them. I expected to go from the 60 and go to the 90 and taste like, okay, this is that beer, but one and a half times, not exactly one and a half times, but also like some kind of, Generic association to each other, just not uh, really there for no. me. I thought you were going in, like the direction. sweetness is sweeter, <clears throat> but it lacks any kind of depth. Like, this had like this weird kind of malty sweetness, a little bit of kind of sugary sweetness. This is like a sugary sweetness with no maltiness. Yeah, the hops in here are floral and biting, but not overly piney, but no kind of citrus. It's just kind of like bittering, sharp bittering, sharp floral bittering with a little bit of like, like nondescript malty sweetness. That's pretty much it. Yeah. So it's kind of like, and it's nine percent. I would much rather drink six of those than three of these or whatever. Four of these. Keith's like, oh shit! I just told everybody I, I drink like nine of these <laughs> <laughs> when people aren't looking. <laughs> yeah, it is what it is. But yeah, it's not a bad beer. But no. next to that sixty, it's not yeah. even close. Like not even close. Like I will drink. 60 all day. Here's the funny part. Is that a lot of time my reviews when they talk about these new school kind of IPAs, whether it be um, you know, new school hazies, those kind of things. I die on that hill of low ABV. I'm like, or or big impact. Okay. So I'm like, oh, if I drink a 10% hazy, I want 10% worth of impact. Yeah. Um, and if I drink a you know six percent, I want six percent. But if I drink like the if you give me a, a high impact low ABV, I'm all for it. If you give me low impact, high EVV, uh, it's not my jam, but a lot of people love that. I could see people liking this can be like, oh, yeah, this drinks nothing like 9%. I'll drink all of these. And I'm like, oh, yeah. my thought process is the exact opposite, which is <clears throat> I don't want to drink these because these are just, yeah. you know what I mean? They're, yeah. they, they taste like what a, what a kind of mild mannered 6% beer would be but at three more percent and yeah. just doesn't really work for me yeah i could i could drink a bunch of these i just don't want to i would rather drink that yeah to 60 so there you go who would have thunk it both of us want to drink low, lower <laughs> abv beer i know this is a fucking like there should be a ticker underneath a news program right now like breaking news matt and keith like low abv beers who would have fucking thunk it that is what there's so there you go and that's all i have to say about it that's all Keith has to say about it, too. Yeah, I'm pretty sure. It's fun. Anyway, uh, Rod chiming in, doing a little LOL, saying true, yeah, would, and also thanks for the mention. What's going on, dude? No worries. Finback is in Queens and now officially in Brooklyn. Are they opening a new spot? Yeah, they opened a, they opened a, I don't know, if, I think it's just a tap room in Brooklyn, maybe. 
I don't know if they opened a whole another brewery in Brooklyn, but it they they have a location in Brooklyn. Well, I, <laughs> well, I, I forget your first name. I apologize, but Ara, I'm gonna say just say Ara. Um, the funny part because I would always say I would always say feedback from Brooklyn, just like not uh, thinking. You'd be <laughs> like they're from fucking Queens, but then I would be like they're about as close to fucking Brooklyn as you could be without <laughs> fucking being in Brooklyn. Like that's pretty much it, right? They're in yeah. southern southern Queens. They're like literally, you could throw a rock from Brooklyn and almost hit the brewery. Yeah, I don't think they're yeah. that. So, they were already in Brooklyn, motherfucker. No. <laughs> yeah. No. Oh man, I don't remember. I haven't been there in a while. Uh oh. Michael Gibson, is this the same guy I saw who got banned from Equilibrium saying he spends tens of thousands yes. of dollars at their establishment? <laughs> That's the fucking guy. I spend 15k a year here. That's the guy. That's the fucking guy. That's the guy. That's the guy. Like he's just we call and he said Crocs because he were all he wears is Crocs. Oh, apparently he wears uh Birkenstocks now. He doesn't wear Crocs anymore. That's that's a lateral move at best. <laughs> that's a lateral move at best. So, Crocs or Birkenstocks? That's what I was told. Is that his, is that his winter wear? Or? I have no idea. Yeah. It yeah. doesn't matter. So, when's the last time you wore Birkenstocks? I've never worn Birkenstocks. Exactly. <laughs> My point proved. Um, and then, uh oh, there we go. Jay Porter trying to in danger beers. That's what's coming up next. Oh yeah, yeah, we got to do this now. Do so we're gonna we're up to the one hundred and twenty portion of do we though? Show we do. <laughs> we do have to do this. I got to get out my little platform here so I can do a proper pour, so you guys can actually see what's going on here. Let's get a Jay's thing off there, and then we'll uh, we'll do a little uh, do a one hundred and twenty side by side pour, do a little one hundred and twenty side by side drink. Then we'll do don't. Don't let me forget to do the cuvee. All important cuvee. That's the most important part of the whole deal here. So we'll see. So you can see that. We'll go like that over there. Um, I'm going to use these even though you get the dirty ones. Fuck you, dude. All right, fine. Yeah. Okay. That works. You guys are you guys are in focus here. Uh-oh. Guy Jordan, drum roll. There you go. He's a musician. That's not. That isn't water. What is that? Go wash it then. <laughs> I'm just trying to prove you wrong, man. <sighs> While Keith washes his glass, I'll drink out of it, dude. I just want to make it look pretty. Fucker. Anyway, 2013, we'll go with that on the left. 2019 on the right. We'll see what these suckers look like. Take a little sip of this 90. Hmm. We'll crack this. Fresh either. So we're talking about a fresh dogfish head 120. Probably gonna look more like the 90 that we just poured. So yeah, look at that. Mm. Mm. Did I leave enough for you? I better. I want to do light pours on this. I couldn't be doing heavy pours for myself. <laughs> and then we'll crack this sucker here. Let's see what this has is. That the old one? one? Yeah, it's the old one. Ugh. Oh, it's gonna be dirt water. <laughs> Look at that. That's what I'm talking about, son. Yeah. So I mean, you can see right now, just age. Oh. I mean, that's actually your oxidation at work. Um, but it's also, you know, I can't do this. In, you know, heavy merc. You know what I mean? Over here, you can actually glean light through this. You can actually see my finger. Kind of go through it. It's got a particulate kind of floating around in there. Um, you know, just kind of, you know, more kind of bits and pieces. It's not necessarily a hazy beer. It's hazy more because of the fine particulate in it more than anything else. If you actually look at this kind of 2013, way more like a barley wine, which, you know, let's not kid ourselves. This is barley wine. This is American barley wine. This is super hopped up American barley wine. 18%. It's actually called it, the ABV on the it, it fluctuates uh, over the years. I think it's somewhere between 17 and 20 usually. Yeah. I don't think it actually calls it out in the bottle. It no, does. it's not in the bottle. Yeah. I does. think you can find it on the internet. But it can fluctuate from year to year. But that just looks like old school kind of aged barley wine. Thick murkiness. You have that particulate floating in there a little bit, not nearly as much as cleared out quite a bit. There's probably a bunch of sediment in the bottle itself, but you just end up looking at just this rich darkness. Yeah. 
Let's get a nose on the on a newbie. I'm gonna tell you right now. I thought it was gonna be way more aggressive and in, in, in yeah. hot characteristic because I have had a fresh 120 relatively recently. So I'll tell my fresh 120 story for all you playing playing along at home. Let's do that. There we go. That's perfect. Um, so my wife, I have now Liesel, as opposed to my wife previously. Um, <laughs> we went. So we, you know, we met on the internet actually, and. Um, you know, we, first date, I came to her. I didn't come to her house, as any fine gentleman wouldn't. And uh, we met at actually a local, like, uh, taproom bar place that had a bunch of good beers. She knew I liked beers just from conversations, so she picked this place called the Draft House, um, close to Washington, New Jersey. We had a great time. And then our second date, she was like, okay, let's meet in between. She felt bad for driving, but I'm, um, you know, I don't care. I love driving. So we met in Stroudsburg at a place. What's the place in Stroudsburg called? Yard of Ale. Yard of Ale. That's where we went. And uh, I sat down and I looked at the beer menu and somebody fucked up. Somebody had 120s on a menu for $6 a bottle. Oh, yeah. They do that there. <laughs> and I was like, oh, what do I do? <laughs> I'm like, I'm on a date, but $6 a bottle at 120. I'm like, no. Nope. I'm like, hey, you want to try something weird? <laughs> and come, had her try it. And she was like, oh, this is good. And then later on, she's like, this is the worst thing I ever had in my fucking life. <laughs> it was way more hop forward than this. At least on the nose. You know what I mean? Like, this just has, it's it's hop forward. It's big. It's it, 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 But it does have this rich kind of caramel maltiness. Now, I'm not sure how this one was kept. It's a 2019 version. And it was, it was September, mid-September. September 2019. So this is about the <clears throat> freshest one I've had in quite some time. It doesn't smell that hot forward. Sure, it is hoppy. It's piney. It's forward. But there's a nice big caramel kind of almost getting the sugar daddy level of kind of sweetness to it. It smells really good. There's a little bit of fusel alcohol, a little bit of kind of acetone thing, yeah. a little bit of heat to it. No shit, Sherlock. 18%. What do you Give expect? or take. Yeah. Let's dive in. Maybe it's like 22. Let's take a let's take a nose. Oh, we're doing on we're the doing. oldie. Cheers. It smells like barley wine. That smells like barley. Yeah. It doesn't smell like barley wine. <laughs> it smells like barley wine. That's what it smells like. I mean, this rich caramel, definite sugar daddy kind of yeah. raisin eddiness. It's kind of just that hop has been driven back. It's still there. It's not nearly as big as this beer. And you still get that little bit of fusel alcohol thing, yeah. but it's it just it's just richer. Like the best thing I could say for those that aren't used to aging beers, um, it's like a reduce reduction. Like if you're gonna reduce a sauce, like if you're gonna make any kind of sauce, and you take like a you know, you take like a, a, a you know a gravy that you're kind of you whipped up. And you reduce it, and you reduce it, and you reduce it. And the first taste you taste, you're like, okay, I can taste this goodness. I can taste this deliciousness. I'm just missing something. and missing missing time. It's missing concentration. And what your reduction does is is does a combination of building up um, that robustness. So you get a little bit more caramelization. You get a little bit more kind of um, just a little bit more impact. But you're also kind of drawing back. You're taking away a, a bit of that water, a bit of those diluted elements. So it starts to kind of build in both direction to where you start to kind of, kind of you know, tip in the other direction. And that's what you're getting over here with the age version. So let's oh. dive into the newbie. Let's see what's what. Cheers. Uh, as uh, as Dylan, 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 Dylan would say, that spits hot fire. That is fucking. It's harsh, but Look, I don't hate it. I don't hate it hmm. because it does have this kind of. It's very much like if you were to whiff rubbing alcohol. Yeah, yeah. That's kind of what you get. But there's a ton of hops in there. Yeah, and you do get a little sweet malty, <clears throat> so it's not necessarily. I don't think it's a negative beer. See, I would, as far as like, oh wait, continue. no, you go ahead. I was gonna say, I would actually prefer drinking this to the ninety. 
because at least you know what you're getting into and you're getting something and for yeah yeah yeah, yeah. It, like if someone's gonna t- like flick you in the nuts just punch me in the nuts yeah. man. Give, give it to me all the way you know what i mean don't just tease me don't just whack me in the nut like just in the edge you're like that fucking hurts like come on bring it bring the whole thing let's go at it you know because for being twice the alcohol give or take it's not it's way uh what do i want to say i thought the 90 was a little bit harsh or harsh as other word i don't know abrasive Rather maybe harsh? maybe yeah something like that i know what you're talking about they know this is this is way smooth this is other than like you can obviously tell there's alcohol, alcohol in it yeah like have you taken a second sip yet yeah oh, the second sip was way better than the first it always is yeah But here's the thing, and this is, I think, what Keith is trying to kind of explain, is that it's a cool experience. Like, you don't get a cool experience with 90. It's just like, yeah, yeah. it is what it is. You might not love this. It might not be your favorite kind of flavor profile, but at least it's an interesting and engaging experience, which is what you want, you know? Actually. Ooh, we're cleansing palates with the 90. Yeah. Like the ninety, I don't. I wouldn't consider. It's not. <clears throat> it's not harsh. I don't know if I would say abrasive either, but it's not like smooth. There's like a bitterness in there that's like. Yeah. Now let's see this. Let's 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 take a sip of sixty and see how it stands up to these. That's a fun little experiment. You can drink out of this one if you want. Oh. Try to be able. It's stuffing up my nose. Something stuffing up, stuffing up my nose right now. No, that was no. a bubble. Hoppy Pilsner. <laughs> That's what that drink's like right now. Yeah. <laughs> That's exactly That's what it's like. It's a great Hoppy Pilsner. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, now I drink 80 of those. <laughs> you know, 6% Hoppy Pilsner. Um, yeah. Okay, let's do it. Oh. Let's dive into this oldie, the goodie. Cheers, everybody. What do you think? It's good. There's something I don't know if the hop it might be the hops. Cause I've drank a few different barley ones recently and I like them and they taste like this. But there's something in this that is a little different. But I think that's because those were more like English style or other wines and they weren't super hoppy. <clears throat> no, it makes sense. It's good though. The thing I get from it is that I'm assuming it's the same thing that you're talking about. There's a slight acetone thing to it. Like there's a slight chemical, like it, and honestly, it's just the high ABV. Is all it is. It's just the ABV on this beer is just way too uh, big. Let me finish. Way too big for it not to be aged super long haul. It's the reason why I tried to get an 09. Because the 2013 is, I think this is delicious. But you give me a 2013 Old Sock or JWE's. Mm-hmm. Or something like that. I think it drinks way better than this beer. And I it really, while that's in English, let's try to find something better. You give me a 2013 Bigfoot from Sierra Nevada, which mm-hmm. is an American barley wine. Yeah. Sure, it's not hopped as much as this, but it's also the same alcohol content. Yeah, I think that drinks <clears throat> way better than what this is. I love this beer. I think it drinks great. It's 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 raisinated Tootsie Roll. You know what I mean? It's all the Tootsie Rolls. It's liquid piss roll. It's watery piss roll. That's like, <laughs> I fucking love that shit. But it needs another five years. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Like, if I think uh, 2009, I think it would be perfect wheelhouse for 120. I mean, that's why I tried to find one. That's why it's hard to find one, to be perfectly honest with you. I tried. You know what I mean? It is what it is. Sometimes you find them, sometimes you don't. I was lucky enough to find a 2013. And while it's absolutely fantastic and drinks 
great and looks nowhere near what it's. I kind of feel bad conveying it. We're gonna have to though. Um, it is. It is the alcohol. Yeah. It is. Yeah. That's what that is. Yeah. And that's what another six years would kill it. It would kill it. It would just that six years would temper all that alcohol. Would take all those harsh elements of it and just make it just so much more fucking drinkable and fantastical. Yeah. yeah. It's a fun. It's a fun little journey though. Let's put it this way. I thought. I thought that this would go. I thought I liked the old 120 the most. I thought I'd like probably the 90, then the new 120 in the 60 tide. That's what so, I thought it was. So what was that? Old, old 90? Old 120. I thought. I thought it was yeah. going to be old 120, 90, and then the new 120 no, in the 60. 60 tide. And it goes old 120, it goes 60. It goes new 120, it goes 90. So, you know, well, the, the old 120 was kind of like no shit Sherlock stuff. It was going to be what I gravitated towards because that's what I like when it comes to beer is, is older beers. It's cool. These are the reason why we do these. Things, I don't know. Man. I think I put 60 men at the top. At the top? Hot Pilsner. <laughs> that's why I call the best color man in 94 lumber. You know, he just 93 lumber. Sorry. I was giving him one extra lumber. <laughs> <laughs> uh okay well we're gonna have to do it i feel bad doing that I don't 90 do it, 90 would be at the bottom for me i don't want to do it dude mm. why because it'd be like 20 percent then because i think this is <laughs> it's got to happen for science you don't have to do it you can keep your separate Oh, I was gonna do it. I was no, just gonna drink. Like, I was just gonna drink a little bit more of both. So no, I but what I'm saying both. is, I can do this, and you can sip out of mine and save your deliciousness over okay. there. So you got the grand coovy, <clears throat> coovy right. of the old 120 and the new 120. Is it everything you thought it would be? It's just hoppy tootsie rolls now. It better, <laughs> it's better, isn't it? <laughs> All right, I'll do it myself. I'm not saying it's better, but it's way better than I thought it would be. And I kind of get more of it because I mix them both. So, it kind of makes it more happy, drinkable. Happy Tootsie Roll, <laughs> that's what that is. Happy Tootsie Roll, give me that Tootsie Roll with some, like, yeah. Yeah. Hmm. You ever try a, you ever uh, get a Thomas Hardy and dry hop it in your uh, French press or something? That's what this tastes like. <laughs> let's, let's, let's see. Have I ever tried to do that? Well, no. But what I have here is an American oh. style, new school American barley wine oh. dry hopped <laughs> with new hops. <laughs> no, jeez. <laughs> I was like, oh, I got to bring that. I'm gonna buy that. So I reviewed this before. Do you want to do this? What? Yeah. Mm. yeah. Let's drink like a, a, a palate cleanser yeah. between these two. But I, I was like on my trip. Um, I just got back from a kind of vacation, a quick weekend vacation with the wifey, and we went down to the Jersey Shore. I went to a bunch of different breweries, and one of the breweries I went to was Cane Brewing. You've guys seen me do their beers quite a bit. Um. One of my favorite beers they produce, they end up putting out, and they always put it out right around Valentine's Day. I just kind of forgot about it, was their Vengeful Heart. Um, this is an American barley wine, um, but it is hopped with pretty much new school hops. So the last time I had this, I was blown away by it. You can go watch the review. It basically tasted like a English barley wine that was hopped with like super uber new school fucking hops. So it was like a juicy tropical fucking American <laughs> barley wine which blew me the fuck away. And I was like, wait, we're going to do 120. I'll bring this along in case Keith is feeling a little bit frisky. So we're going to crack that. Stay tuned. <laughs> if we're still alive. <laughs> but let's, what's the lowest ABV thing we have in this fucking cooler? Uh, maybe that Pilsner? Maybe? I need a Pilsner to reset my brain. Oh, actually, what's the ABV on this? 
I think the I think the uh, IPA is six, so it's he's like five point nine percent. I ain't lower than five. Oh, uh, Dave? I don't know. No, we didn't drink that. That's a hazy. It's a. Mm, mm. Is it? This is a, a Belgian blonde, five point four percent. Yeah, we'll we'll crack that later. Anyway, there you go. So let's wash this glass out. And by wash it, and I mean just pour beer in it. So that's how it works. So we're gonna be kind of doing a little palate cleansing for you guys. We'll jump in the comments in a section, but in the second, I mean, um, man, I got stuffy. This is other half and oh, creature comforts. Yeah, it's a collab. It's a pilsner with New Zealand hops, a little hoppy Ford pills, Georgia grown wheat and grit. Son, 5.9 percent geometric pattern can. Don't get shot over that shit. So, okay, anyway, let's do comments, see what, what's going on. So we sort left off there talking about Croxy. I'm gonna use the restroom. Whoa. Keep this off to the urinal. The little boy. To the there. head. The head. Um, arm is like I haven't had it 120 in years, but I remember it being on a waiting list to get one bottle. LOL. Now it just sits on shelves. That's the funny part, man. It just sits everywhere. You can get it wherever you want, but I couldn't find a bottle today. I had to resort to Keith to find a, a new one. It was really, really weird. I actually, it was kind of blown away. I couldn't find one. I stopped at seven places on my way home from the, excuse me. I came home from Seaside Heights, New Jersey to basically the Delaware Water Gap area. It's like a two and a half hour drive. I stopped at seven places, nothing. It was really weird. Anyway, drum roll. We already did that. Um, live cast prepared. There you go. Uh, cheers from the Netherlands. What's up? Beer Instagram? Beer Instagram. Sounds like I did that right. Um, yeah. uh, let's see. Bum, 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 bum. I usually get some orange marmalade on the aged ones. Yeah, I never get orange marmalade that much on beers. It's never been like a prominent note. I get on beers. Uh, it's more been like a Tootsie Rolly um, Raisinets is what I look for. Let's put it that way. So there's probably like other beers that kind of error, error towards or edge towards that kind of orange marmalade. But I also hate the word or phrase orange marmalade. So maybe it's just me being an asshole. I don't know. Um, getting crazy. We're trying. Uh, what temp are you drinking it at? Cellar. We drank it probably at around 50. 50 degrees. That's what I like to drink stuff at. I like to drink almost everything. Like, the cellar beers are like at 50. Non-cellar beers, like hazies and all that stuff, closer to like 45. The reason is this. Is because I like to drink it over time. And I like the beginning as much as I like the end. So, I like cellar temp beers. There's nothing wrong with that. And But for me, it's like... It's like playing Madden, but playing that 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 mode where you can just play like fourth quarter down by five, where it's like you're just playing the exciting part. I want the whole experience. So I like to play like, you know what I mean, the whole game and see how it kind of finishes. So if you start at 50 and you show a little bit of discipline and just kind of let it warm up over time, you know, like I have, you know, this, I'll let this warm up over time. I'll take another sip, go from there, and kind of let go from 50 to 65, 70, and see how it changes uh, as far as, like, taste and as far as mouthfeel and as far as impression. So, you know, that's kind of where it lies. Now, that poses a little bit of a problem when it comes to, like, reviewing beers because, you know, mo more times than not, if I review, like, a beer, it's seven minutes, you know, give or take a couple of minutes. Am I showing that kind of wide berth of time? No. I would love to be able to drink a beer, crack a beer at 50, drink it, come back at 60, come back at 65. Give my thoughts across the board. I don't have that time. So it ends up being kind of like kind of hard to do those things. But in the grand scheme of things, I'm not reviewing beers or in general. I kind of start selling beers at 50. That's how I like it. Um, Hatchimalachi says, how did your Icarus visit 
oh, how did you like your Icarus visit? I loved it. Um, it was probably, I don't know, fourth or fifth time, maybe. I've been there. We, we were there, what, once or twice together, you know? Yeah. Um, but I always enjoy it when I go down there. Like the tap room, they always have a wide range of beers on. Uh, when I went down there, they had um, you know, I had a Hellas, they had a Kolsch, um, and all that kind of stuff. So, uh, you know, I like it, it's a great tap room. They make great beers, so I'm a fan. What do you think, grits and gravy? Yeah, buddy. What's it called again? Grits and what? Grits and greens. Okay, to play grits and gravy. <clears throat> Another Chappelle show skit, is it? Yeah. Grits and gravy was from the Players Haters Ball. Grits and gravy. You know, hey, really? I don't know. I just busting out Chappelle I show did. shit. He doesn't know who grits, grits and gravy is. Anyway, uh, what else do we have here? I am getting some tissue roll, son. The tissue roll. We got to do. If you have to do, I don't know what the tissue roll is. Otherwise, I'd do it. But. Yeah. What do it? Yeah. Which one's he dragging? The one twenty. Yeah. Is an age one though? I don't know. Let us know. Or is um, he the one dragging the twenty eighteen? Yes, I, I believe so. Let's scroll back up. I don't know. Anyway, um, <laughs> he's like uh, Chris Conchado. Conchado. I think I nailed that. Conch, because I used to stab shit through those. Conch, I know. Uh, I definitely agree that 120 is smoother than 90. It is. It is in its own way. Uh, not Greg. Got it. Thanks, Matt. Definitely not Greg. I am <laughs> overweight and I have a beard. That's about where the similarities end. And what about Leonard Washington? Be like, what's <laughs> he say? That's the best part. Best part, he's like, you have to shoot me. <laughs> and he's like, Okay, boom. <laughs> Charlie Murphy blasts this fucking... You don't know what I'm talking about right now. So the best skit in the history of Chappelle Show is the... Uh, what is it? The, it's the, it's a dice game. It's the uh, it's the World Series of Dice. And it's held in like a basement of like um, the Marcy Projects, I think it is. And it's Ashy Larry. It's Leonard Washington. You watch your tone, son. It's like cigarette hanging out of his mouth. And... Uh, and uh, and yeah, it's uh, fuck you is one of the players, and um, and grits and gravy, grits and gravy is uh, grits and gravy is played by uh, I forget his name. Anyway, it's like everybody's playing dice, and then like it gets to the point where like they're like, and just on time, it's like people broadcasting the Olympics, but it's like in the basement of fucking like the projects, and it's like someone comes and robs it, and it's Charlie Murphy, and it's like <laughs> and Chappelle's playing this Leonard Washington character. And he's like, he just rolls up and be like, robbing it, robbing it, robbing it. And he's like, give me the money. And Leonard Washington is like, if you want this, you're going to have to shoot me. And he's like, <laughs> boom. He's like, yeah, whatever. It just takes his money. You know what I mean? It's, yeah, that's the best. Leonard Washington, son. Anyway, um, no 120 for me tonight, but I'm still here drinking along some Oasis from Zigmeister. Okay, fair enough. What's, what's their Oasis? Hey, it's one of their. Uh, IPAs, oh. one of their New England style IPAs. They do like, uh, uh, like they always do like a milkshake version. Oh yeah, and yeah. like whatever. But it's one of their hazies. I have not had that one. I don't believe. Um, 2018. He's drinking along, so he gets a little bit of fucking tipsy roll. Um, good job in my name, <laughs> Cachado. Uh, <laughs> anyway, um, I smell your lightsaber. Oh, um, that's another fucking Chabelle show thing. <laughs> that's the fucking the trading trading wives. And like, do you, do you remember? It's like, oh, fuck. It's like, see, he doesn't know. He uh, dropped a, how can you drop a Chappelle show reference? And I don't know these things. So you know how they did the wife swap thing and like, uh, fucking like, yeah. uh, like not in Chappelle show, but in real life. Yeah. They did it in Chappelle show. And it was Letter Washington went and got swapped with somebody else, and it was the he got um, and, and he was rifling through like his like fake wife's like shit and found her vibrator, and he was like playing with it. Oh, like, yeah. it was a lightsaber, but it smelled. Yeah. And then yeah. like, later on, he's like, yeah. "I smell your lightsaber." Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. I, I have mean, seen that. Yeah, Abomination Anthropologist is a very great beer. I haven't had that one. 
No, I haven't had a lot of Abomination as of late. Their price points, their price points a little bit high it's because a, they go yeah. through twelve percent beer project, so all the beer gets brewed up north through a distribution uh, company and comes back down. But they're doing well for themselves. They actually just got voted like best new brewery in PA or something like yeah. that. You know, so they're doing really well. So I know they're doing great things, and I've done a couple of their beers over time, but it's kind of hard. You know, man of means can't buy everything. Let's put it that way. Yeah, I heard of trimming hedges, but you scorched your son. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna I'm going to 180 my noggin out on Chappelle, and that's the thing. I would sit here and do it all night. Like my favorite. Okay, if you want to see, I I've dropped a couple. Chip Hell references in all my reviews, but if you want to see me do just like a horrible Chip Hell impression, go watch my review of White Ferrari from fucking the Veil. <laughs> because I do the whole White Panda thing from Cribs. I'm like, yeah, it's White Ferrari. Hulk Hogan choke one out for my birthday. Like, I do that at the beginning of the review, and I think like 99% of people like are you on methamphetamine right now? <laughs> like, like I'm just trying to be funny. You know what I mean? And I'm like doing this whole like Chappelle show cribs thing and everybody, <laughs> and, like no one got it. Like nobody got it. And I'm like, I'm like, yeah, I just sound like a crazy crackhead right now, but yeah, terms his life. And that's the other thing. Probably. And here's the other thing that I say, like, and I take that back. I said the most Chappelle thing I did was that the most Chappelle thing I do that people don't get is to say, some people like cucumber pickles. <laughs> that's like that's from Chappelle's show. That's when he was on the the stand for like uh, R. Kelly or something like that. When he was talking about something, I forget what it was, but he was like, "Some people like cucumber pickles," and that's I, I've said that probably like five hundred times in my reviews. When I'm like talking about a beer that I like and I don't like, or I'm like, I don't like this beer, but some people do, and you know, some people like cucumber pickle. You know, it is what it is. Chappelle show. Cheers. I should just end the video now. Anyway, so yeah. It's not 18%, so it's was it? 10. 10.2. You could boost this easy. 12.2. 12. 12. 12. Or 10.2. Sorry. No. Anyway, Mike's chiming in. He's like, oh, well, well, I got to check it. I don't think I saw that. Yeah, that's, that's me trying. You're going to see the worst Chappelle fucking... <laughs> Impersonation in history of mankind. Um, Ron's beer reviews and tools. Hmm. It's like tool time with beer. Uh, hello, guys. Ron Gravis here. Grovis? Grovis. You know, Grovis on that one? Mm. Yeah. I think, okay. I'm, I think I'm going. What's up, Ron? Yeah. <laughs> Ron. Ron? You, you've used me again with Rod and Ron. Actually, I think it's French. It's Grovy. Grovy. Grubby. Yeah. Mm. I just looked at my phone. I shouldn't have did that. Anyway, so let's see what's what. Um, let's talk other half. Since we're done with the 120 thing. So other half was in the news. You see a bunch of like um, uh, beer journalists and beer tubers and all that kind of stuff. Comes a whole other half thing. Anyway, for those, uh, we're drinking other Actually. half, right? Oh, yeah, this is other, yeah, so other Apri half thing Apri and, oh. and uh, Creature Comforts. Mm. Um, we are uh, so other half has two locations. They have their original location, which is in Brooklyn, New York, which is actually in Brooklyn, not Queens. And then they have a spot which is in Rochester, New York, which is but not actually in high. Rochester and outside of Rochester. So who the fuck knows what's what? Anyway, um, it's the same thing. You can get all the same beers, and actually, they end up being cheaper in Rochester half the time. Like oh, their man. anniversary stuff, there's one per bottle in in Brooklyn that was like no limit in fucking Rochester. <laughs> anyway, so the long and short of it is, I'm gonna give you the actual like legitimate take on what happened. So there was a line of people lining up for beer. Some dude thought it was cool to visit New York City left with his girlfriend or wife or significant other, went out, got shit-faced, came back, laughed at a bunch of people waiting for beer. Those people gave him shit back. He said, fuck you. He got butt hurt, went into his apartment, grabbed a gun, came back, said, I'm going to shoot all of you. 
but didn't actually shoot anybody because that's what happens most of the time. <laughs> and the people in line fucking laughed at him even more, but at the same time got kind of scared. So they called the police, and the police came, and they took him to jail. Is that? I think that's pretty much it. Yeah. Was, yeah, basically. But here's the best part. There was apparently it. there was apparently one guy in particular. I saw something about, oh, I'm the guy who was giving the guy shit, and he pointed a gun at me. But but, here, but it was it was a group of people. But here's the thing: <laughs> if <laughs> like no, there's no way just one random dude at the line was giving someone shit, and everybody was like, oh, oh, don't give this guy shit. Basically, what it was a bunch of beer nerds, and by beer nerds, I mean everybody. Like sock broker, fucking guy who's working at Seven Eleven. Like, there's no. Well, I think it was the guy like yelled at them. He was like, or he he was walking by and he was like, I don't know why these fucking people wait for fucking beer or whatever. Mm -hmm. And then I think one person in particular. Yeah, but there's no way that something. one person said stuff and nobody else said anything. Oh yeah, like it's, oh yeah, it's I'm a sure mob, it's a mob mentality. Like, hey, this one guy's yelling at a group of 800 people. Well, the 800 people are going to fucking yell at this guy and laugh at everybody. <laughs> you know what I mean? And then it's going to be like, and then the dude brings the gun to the table and it's like, oh, wait, we're fucked now. Let's not do oh, anything more. Oh, yeah. The guy, the guy yeah, with the gun. Was, was, I don't know if I buy the white <laughs> claw thing. That, that's, and, and this is Rod fucking <laughs> chiming in. Or, this is Rod chiming in with don't miss throwing the white claw thing. <laughs> The white claw seems a little bit too convenient for the fucking conversation. <laughs> yeah. Now, here's the thing. Do you take the white claw as a too convenient thing? Or is it more so white claws everywhere? So it probably happened. Because if anything is going to be thrown, it's going to be a white claw. I, If I don't see the white claw, I don't believe it. <laughs> I think that's more of an embellishment on everything. I think that's a bunch of beer nerds in line. Thinking, you know, claws or laws. Is thinking, oh, this guy threw a white claw at us. You know what I mean? Just to sound even funnier. You know what I mean? That's kind of where, uh, <laughs> you know, it, it's a little bit shaky. But what I know is if you kind of take, you know, what is it, Occam's razor, you know what I mean? And go down to the most simplest kind of, kind of brass tacks kind of uh, conversation here. Oh, yeah. A, a townie got drunk and yelled at a bunch of people to line up for beer. Some chucklehead laughed at that guy. <laughs> that dude said, go fuck yourself. <laughs> a bunch of people in line said, oh yeah? Well, you go fuck yourself because there's a bunch of us. And then he left and they said, haha, fuck that guy. We won. And that guy came back said, I'll shoot you in the face. And they said, call the police. That's what happened. That's what happened. Like that's what and that's honestly, basically, basically that's the best in that that's the best outcome for that scenario because typically that scenario keeps going. And some dude's like, Oh, you got a gun, you won't use it. Fuck you, and then someone gets shot in the face. Nobody gets shot. But here's the thing. I and I'll just touch on what Ron's saying right now. He's actually saying I'm talking about like, you know. Um, one guy, one guy said apparently he couldn't afford a better Airbnb. That definitely happened. Um, <laughs> and was the white claw checked as evidence in question? And how was it reported? That's how it's reported by the news. I get that, Ron. Uh, Ron I said Ron. <laughs> it's even better, um, Rod. Um, these are people we actually like hang out with. Like these, like maybe not the people that oh, know yeah. the guy, but these are like. I live an hour away from other half. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Like, this is just, like, hilarious. Like, this is, like, it's happening. And my friends text me, like, dude, this is what's happening right now. It's just, it's a shit show. It's hilarious. You have, a, you have people standing in line all night drinking. You have some dude from fucking Pennsylvania fucking taking his fucking, you know, side chick to New York to fucking rip in a fucking Airbnb in Brooklyn across from other half, which... They said, oh, this is the best other best Airbnb you can get. Listen, other half's in a shit fucking place in New York. In 10 to 15 years, it's going to be fucking awesome. But right now, it's fucking... Yeah, it's, not it's shitty. Place. It's shitty. So that's true. It's, you know, it's one of those things where it's, it's a funny story because it ended up in a way that where no one got hurt. Here's my thing. I really want to know what happened to this guy because carrying a handgun in New York is like fucking like a super felony. Uh -huh. Like a super felony. 
you can't fucking hair it, carry a handgun in fucking New- in the boroughs of New York. Fucking what's his name? Plaxio Burst accidentally shot himself in the leg in a fucking nightclub in New York five, 10 years ago and went to jail. <laughs> he didn't even hurt him, but he hurt himself. <laughs> he went to jail. You can't hair, carry a handgun in New York and get away with it. So I'm really curious to see what happened. I don't know if the police just kind of turned a blind eye or maybe the guy knew somebody, you know, and it was like, whatever. <laughs> um, but it, it, it's, it's, it's funny because of the outcome. But it's also like, listen, you know, your your people are assholes, man. (laughs) And when you combine that with legitimate assholes, like straight up, like, yeah, yeah. Did you see um, the Hayes Bros comments on there? And they were posting like ridiculous videos and saying, oh, this was that other half or whatever. No. No, I saw the post and stuff. Yeah, but. so I saw a few comments of people, like, apparently the news, like, it was on the news, and apparently some of the reporters were bringing these ridiculous videos that Hayes Boys oh. posted <laughs> and being like, is like this what it was? <laughs> like the one where they shot the overhead of people kicking chairs and everything going crazy? Oh, <laughs> my God. That's even better. <laughs> so those that don't know yeah. who the Hayes Boys are... <laughs> They're a bunch of fucking fantastic dudes. They take, they basically take all the bullshit. Basically, this story is exactly what they're all about. <laughs> and then they just make fun of it. Um, really good dudes. And they're basically like, you know, and they're, you know, um, fucking worst beer blog, all that kind of shit. Similar but different kind of thing. And they take all the kind of bullshit and just kind of toss it on its head. And, um, I didn't know they. I didn't know the fucking news that I they s- took. I saw a comment saying, "Yeah, some reporter came up to me, showed me this video, and asked me if, <laughs> or whatever, so whatever, whatever happened." happened. <laughs> when this was going down, Hayes Boys is posting video of like a fight, like in a random <laughs> country of some dude like fighting somebody and kicking over like tables. Yeah, I forget stuff. what the and the news is like. This happened there, right? Yeah. They're like, oh yeah. <laughs> And something, then they yeah. posted it like that. After, yeah, after it was something like that. Yeah, mm-hmm. but Even apparently, uh, yeah, his bros is big enough that the actual news is using their <laughs> bros as as uh, sources. The fucking onion a beer. Um, <laughs> damn it, Mitt. I mean, Matt. Oh, don't call me Mitt, man. Don't call me. I mean, Ron is not bad. Oh, I guess if I call you Ron, so deal with that, Ron. <laughs> I walk. You win, brother. Ain't no laws with the claws. I think I heard that once before. <laughs> um, and, and he was arrested when it happened, but didn't hear how his release went. Yeah, he definitely got arrested, but I'm just curious to see if he gets pressed with any kind of bullshit from having an actual gun because you can't fuck with that shit when it comes to yeah. New York City breweries and all that kind of stuff. So, anyway. Are we open that barley wine? Yeah, I guess. I have like a cooler behind us full of like all the lowest ABV beers. And I'm like, yeah, let's just drink. There's like one barley wine. I'm like, yeah, we'll drink the barley wine in there. Actually, it put a pretty good dent in it. So. Oh my. Well, I think Ooh. half of it was was these. Right? It was mostly bottles. Yeah. 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 I love this. The tuning know. fork. The tuning double headed axe. I love that. <laughs> so, we're doing a little bit of Ventral Heart from Cane Brewing. You're talking about a 10.2% barley wine hopped with new school herbs. That's barley wine right there. I know it looks like stout, but that's barley wine. Man, this blew me away the first time I had it. And I only had it once. Mm. I like that. Is there like chocolate in there? It's, it's like, like a... Like an orange... Like not orange. It's like a citrus. Bright citrus. Like rindy chocolate. Like if you were to like put citrus rind on like a chocolate cake. Oh, there's, there's something... What is that? 
It's not the Toblerone stuff or the, the chocolate orange. There's something that has that. I think it's like a European candy or something that has a... It's got like the orange zest on it or in it or something. <clears throat> Oh, this is better than the <laughs> This is, I don't know how I feel about this. Because it's new school hops, right? It's like a hazy IPA. Tropical hops. <laughs> it's like a hazy IPA. It's a tropical it's like hop <laughs> American barley wine. Yeah. Like, and here's, here's the worst part about this is that, the, like, I can show you a conversation I have with a brewer. A year and a half ago, about this kind of beer, and this came out before that conversation. But it was talking about taking making a super tropical hopped IPA or no American barley wine that would drink super cool like this, but wondering how it would age. Mm. Now I'm really curious to see how this would age, like in like five to ten years. Guess how many bottles I bought? One. One, guess how much they cost? Like ten bucks, eight bucks. <laughs> fucked up. <laughs> I fucked up. I straight <laughs> fucked up. I should have bought fucking ten of them. Was there a limit on them? No. They got released two days earlier. I bought like what? Well, like they were still available. Oh yeah. Yeah, I fucked up. That's what I did. I fucked up. <clears throat> yeah, but don't the... But, like, the tropical hops, like, fall off and they get bitter, right? But would it, how would it change in 10 years? No one knows. No one ever made a tropical hop fucking barley wine. Like, what is it going to be like in five years? Well, I'm just I'm just saying it's, it'll probably just... They'll fall off. It'll get bitter and then it'll just kind of get... But how is it going to change? I don't know. You know what I mean? Like, I don't know. You don't know. Yeah, that's the best. Because do it. do tropical hops after they fall off? Do they react the same way as just bitter hops? That's the thing. No one knows. I don't think anybody knows. Like, do they react like normal hops, or are they gonna, like when you put them in something like this? Like, in theory, you can actually say, okay, a hop's gonna do this, a hop's gonna do that. But when you're talking about a like super malt Ford. Barley wine like this. That's Honestly, I don't. I don't. Um, sorry to interrupt, but I don't taste anything other than the tropical fruit. This just tastes like tropical fruit. Really? You don't get any kind of malt. No. <laughs> I'm talking to the wrong person. Then you don't get rich, sweet. Maybe maltiness. a little. Maybe a little bit. Yeah. This tastes like. But like the this. Ta this tastes like an English barley wine with tropical hops to me. An English barley wine first. I don't. I think my brain is just, it just goes. Keys off the show. <laughs> Moving forward. Just fucking cut it off. No, no and that's I do, the cool part. I do get a little bit of the, uh, like, um, what is it? Uh, caramel, toffee, whatever, whatever stuff. But, like, once the tropical stuff hits. Sip that. What was this? This is tasting better when you sip it now. It's a cuvee. We're gonna do it, super cuvee on that. But yeah, once the once the once my uh, once my taste buds get the tropical, it just goes to IPA, and then all the other stuff just goes away. <laughs> and it's just like I'm drinking an IPA. Plus, it's not like super heavy or anything. It's not. It's Delicious. not that not that it's thin, but it's it's. Uh... <clears throat> and Keen's labeling, like I've always loved their labels. But they're so good. Like uh their their font choice has gotten like way more kind of in tune with what a lot of people do. But even talk about this kind of like, matte black label with this kind of mm -hmm. like nice kind of foil red in the back. I don't know. Something about it. it sucks that now it's used to get this beer. This beer cost eight bucks in a five hundred milliliter. You used to get this in a seven fifty for ten. Um, so that's kind of where it kind of jumps shark a little bit, but 
Yeah. But was it new school hops? Do you think the do you the think the first one I had was like like even more juicy and new school? Oh yeah, it was crazy. That's why I was like when I drank it and I did the review online, I was like, this is insane. I'm like, I've never tasted anything like this. Like it was like who who would do a juicy tropical American barley? <laughs> Let me rephrase that. Who would do that and make it well? Because you could do it and fuck it up real easy. And re that's the whole reason why people don't do it. I think they're because they're like, okay, this if is, we do this and it fails, we're spending all the money. This is just a hazy, dark IPA. <laughs> <laughs> I, knew Matt, I knew Matt would like that, so that's why I said it. <laughs> My brain hurts right now. <laughs> uh, uh, I do need some lager soon, though. Mm. I think we're almost done. Mm. I think that might be my next one. We'll see what's what. We're an hour uh, and a half in. Wow, I thought it was longer. Yeah, it seems. Yeah. We're down to 12. We're up in the. They made the high 20s at one point, so probably losing people as we speak. Um, <clears throat> as far as comments, talk about Jay Porter back to the drink. So I'm assuming you stepped away for a minute. Then we have Hack Sack. Five years of aging 120 is awesome. Ten years of aging 120 is medicinal. Not a good flavor for me. I don't know, man. I mean, I would actually... Do you think the alcohol never goes away? No, there's always going to be a bit of alcohol fusel alcohol in this too, but I mean, I, I mean, the years and years I've had 120, I feel like eight, eight to ten years has always been wheelhouse for me. Like as far as like perfect, um, you know. Have you had it that old before? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Like eight, eight, eight is probably the. Hmm, no, I'm probably lying. I've had eight and ten, but six might be. The one we had tonight might be the most often I've had it, but I've had a couple a little bit older. And that, uh, honestly, at that point, I think you're talking about a personal preference. You know, it, it might be a thing where it it's it, it might lean a little bit more in one person's direction than the other. So I kind of get that. Um, Mike chiming in, the best part of the other half drama is the guy who claims to have talked the shit, put himself on glassware. About the situation, like really, well, that's just beer, you know. Nowadays, people, you know, think they do think they're the fucking coolest thing in history of mankind. They're like, I'm that guy who did that, and be like, really, you're that guy who did that. And you know, at the, at the get, everybody's like, oh, that's the guy who did that. And then two weeks later, people are like, that's the fucking guy who. Did that you know what i mean so it's like one of those things where that guy's like i'm gonna ride my fame into some instagram fortune of uh, being a super cool guy and then two weeks later they're like yeah nobody likes you you sh really shouldn't hang out because in the grand scheme of things i understand why that dude mouthed off the other guy but he made the situation worse in the grand scheme. And I have a hard time with this. It's, I'm not trying to be righteous. Like I wouldn't do those things, but like in the grand scheme of things, that dude who was talking shit, everybody should have ignored him and just let him go back to his fucking shitty Airbnb and do his fucking thing. Uh, but I'm also seeing guy who would have said hot, something. So hot take. Oh, shit. Someone paid that guy to be there. So that, People could get wristbands at 11 p.m. and not have to stand there until 7 a.m. Hot or take? <laughs> Other half line wait, lines are waning, so they paid some guy to come pull a gun, so <laughs> it causes a big fucking uproar to where they get a bunch more publicity and they get way more popular again. Hot take. I feel like if you're hot in take, no hot or take, double hot take. That, you know, Hanging Hills had a bunch of Antifa stuff going on. So, you know, Trump 
sent somebody to the other half release <laughs> to make sure that Bloomberg went to fucking Hardywood Brewing so that <laughs> fucking whatever happened and that everybody was confused. That's the take. I'm confused. <laughs> yeah, there you go. So those are all the takes. There we go. Agree. We all have different tastes. That's true. true. Some people like cucumbers pickled. Um, and obviously it says drink now or a decade or so. Yeah. I mean, aging beer is the best thing in the world. Ages well. That's all it says. Ages well. I like me. Do you, do you think the slight difference in ABV, since the ABV can differ like five five percent or whatever? Do you think do you think certain ABVs will age uh or will not age better, but like age longer than others. I think <clears throat> I don't think a ABV has a lot to do with anything as far as uh, ref define that or let's expand on that. I don't think the ABV has a lot to do with it. Well, I mean, as far as like, like if oh, which one's the 13? So, like, this is 13. So, if this was like if this ended up being like 22 percent mm -hmm. but this one was 19 mm -hmm. this one would be better or the alcohol would be less whatever like I like, think well it's it, it, like not that it would age better but like it would be better sooner than like I mean, it could use yes like a no. year. It depends on beer though, because you could have a beer that like I've had like oh I guess there's more than there's this. like beers that are sixteen percent that drink great when they're relatively fresh, but then you have beers that are ten percent that are need a couple of years on them. Like it, it's not a static vacuum, right. you know. I think if you take you you can't look at beer like it's in a vacuum, like um, I have a. 10% beer. What if we put that beer this in a style? Vacuum? Well, that's called boofing. Do you have a vacuum? It's pretty fucking awesome. <laughs> um, but, it, 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 you know, it, like if you look at a beer and be like, it's 10% Belgian beer, Belgian dark, and it's going to eat just long. That's not how it works. And there's so many different variables that come from it, whether it be, you know, bottle, the actual bottling process to the seal on the cap to the actual condition of the bottle inside of it. To where transportation to where it got where it went, how it was taken care of, um, the temperature it was kept at, <clears> all those things come to play. So, like the beer we had at Jordan sent us, the 120, I think, is a, a, a really good representation of what 120 can be at six years old. Yeah. So, obviously, that beer was taken really good care of. Um, the one that we actually had fresh, I think, might not have been taken care of all that well. Wasn't bad, but I think it lacked that sharpness that we talked about when we first opened it. And I think that's because maybe it was kind of kept at a non regulated temperature for the past six months and maybe it hit high and low temperatures multiple times. So, you know, this stuff is not a science. Do you know what I mean? Like, it's it's more me sitting here, us sitting here, kind of talking about beers and having a time and all that stuff. So, it's not a matter of like, this is right, this is wrong. Yeah. Um, um, I do know that. The place I got this, <clears throat> they had about half a case. About half of it was in a cooler. Half of it was on a shelf, non-refrigerated shelf. So I don't know if they had this on the non-refrigerated shelf. And then they sold out of some stuff, so they put like, it in the cooler. For example, it was in, it was in the ref refrigerated shelf. Where would you pick? From the front or the back? The front. Okay. Cause that, cause opening the door and stuff, right? Well, well, no. Do they look at the cooler? Do they load from the front of the back? If they load from the front, you want to pick the back. If they load oh. from the back, you want to pick the middle. Because if they load from the front, somebody doesn't give a shit. They're just going to load in every time they have to do it. So the older ones always going to be back, never see light, and always be cold. If they're going to load from the back. You want to pick the metal because they're going to take the warm one out, put it in the back, and the the, the, the better one. So that's that's the other like weird 
kind of crazy. Time. So you're saying you I should have bought all of them. When you look at the play, you know, <laughs> and we should have we should have went through them all. But you look at you look at that. Like I actually, that's the things I think about when I buy beer. I'm like, <laughs> I look at the cooler and be like, are they loading the cooler from behind? Be like, if they are, and be like, I'll probably pick from the middle. And like, if it's like one of those kind of like coolers you can't load from behind, I'm like, I'll pick from the back on these kind of beers because I'm like, chances are it's going to be like start to get low, the reload. When they reload nine times out of ten, they're not going to pull the old ones out and put the new ones in, but it's going to put more in. So it's going to shove the older one towards the back. I'm just surprised I found it, and I'm just surprised that they had so many of them. Yeah, no, 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 no. <laughs> and that's the thing. I'm not like, I'm not oh yeah, saying, like, fuck you. <laughs> How dare you? How dare you go find a 120 and bring it here? I'm sorry, um, but that's the thing. That's the thing you have to think of. Like, like a lot of times when I go buy beer, I'm like, I, like. Maybe that's me being like fucking weird, but I'm like, be like, okay, be like, how's this laid out? Be like, you know, I want to pick one from a cooler, but how many do they have in a cooler? And I'll kind of sometimes I'd be like, okay, which which one should I pick? But that's probably me overthinking things. I don't know. <sighs> Maybe. Maybe a little bit. Okay. Let's drink all the barley wine as fast as possible. All right. Yeah. Back to the comments. We have Michael Gibson chiming in with the hottest take. Jet fuel doesn't melt steel beams. I don't know. I'm drunk. I'm sorry. It actually doesn't. It doesn't. A lot of people. I mean, he says it doesn't. And it doesn't. So there you go. Ingredients and storage. It's a thing. I know what you're talking about. I'm just trying to be funny. Um, <laughs> tell me not ABVs, but styles matter more to me. To me? As far as aging, I think. Yeah. 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 Well, no, there's there's also a cutoff. Um, you know, you have to be above a certain percent, you know. Yeah. Well, actually, that was more my question. Well, like, that's in, in a vacuum. You're talking about a six percent creek versus uh eight. You know, seven percent. You know, Belgian. Like, there's there's different things here. Let's brass hacks. This is what matters. Bottle conditioning matters. ABV matters. Storage. No, as far as the beers go. So you're talking about oh. you're talking about bottle conditioning. So whether the beer is actually yeah. bottle conditioned, so that's number one. Those are going to age the best. All yeah. bottle conditioned <clears throat> beers are going to age the best. Now there could be something nefarious in the bottle yeah. that makes shit go sideways. But you always number one hierarchy bottle conditioned beers with nothing else going on that are plus let's just call it eight percent are going to be your best aging beers. Mm -hmm. Next level bottle conditioned beers. Above eight percent, that maybe run in your traditional kind of aging beer profile, whether it be a sour beer, whether it be a multi beer, your hoppy beers, your Belgian table beers, your Belgian hoppy pails are probably not going to age it that well. There are outliers to the to the to the gamut, the 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 cubicle, whatever you want to call it. Like a, you know, you have um. Uh, Stilly not is one of the best ageable beers. You're talking about a eight and a half, nine percent Belgian pale ale. Um, that age is fantastic. There's that's the exception, not the rule. So then you talk there. Once you start to eke out to different things, non-bottle condition barrel aged barrel aged beers, adjunct laden beers, all those once you start adding moving parts, that's when shit goes sideways. So bottle condition always a good bet. Over seven to eight percent always a good bet. But there's exceptions to the rule. Good demo, that's right. Yeah. Yeah. Now, Ralph chiming in. My boy, Ralph. Um, just roll up in the con ABV, ABV conversation and aging. Uh, and I have to say, a lot of what goes down to brewery practices is how it's stored in beer style. But I think you just covered that. So, yeah. I love you, brother. Can't wait to chug a beer. How beer is fermented makes a crazy difference. Very true. Oh, uh, Rampant Lions chiming in. There you go. Um, saying hello, you delicious gentlemen. We are mm. quite delicious. Right? Thank you very much, James. Um, uh, 
Uh, Jay Porter down again. They typically load from the back or forward back. I know that, that but I also you know you got to look at and see which ones do what. Minus assholes like you, Jack Dates. <laughs> oh, go fuck yourself. <laughs> anyway, if you guys were a beer, what do you think your flavor would be? Is sewer water a flavor? <laughs> what flavor yeah. would I be? Man, this is way harder than I thought it would be. Sweaty. Well, yeah, it'd definitely be a goza. <laughs> um, <laughs> what flavor would it, if I was a beer? Well, I was saying that for me. Um, I'd have to be a bitter. You know what I mean? Like an English bitter. Um, is he asking what we would want I, to be? Like, No, no, right? what we would be. This is what we would be. No, what I'd want to be is a fucking 30-year-old Thomas Hardy. What I am <laughs> is a 37% English bitter. Like, I'm just like, I'm super bitter and way too fucking out of control. And I shouldn't be consumed by anybody. I feel like. Keith would be Keith would be an English mild, but he's the English mild that has. This is no, let's do this. This is even better. <laughs> I'm gonna say what Keith uh, is, and Keith is gonna say what oh, I am. Geez. This is even better. <laughs> this is even better. What beers would we be? Keith would be an English mild, but your last sip has two drops of acid in it. <laughs> what? Yeah, yeah. To where it's like okay, everything's okay, but at the end it's just like think different, man. You just need to expand your mind and fucking it's gonna be a ride. And hold on. That's that's what Keith is. Keith is your English bitter, your cask English bitter that someone dosed at the end of the night. That that that's what that's what that's what Keith is. Where am I? I can't wait to hear this. That's a fucking that's a four loco. Free free band, free, free band four loco. Barley wine flavored four loco. <laughs> <laughs> With a shot of absinthe in it and a little bit of methamphetamine. Oh. We're waiting. You're you're the best English barley wine that was aged perfectly. There's a butt here. And was was opened a little too past its prime. Oh shit! <laughs> he called me old, <laughs> but he gave me a lot of compliments up front. So I'll take it. I'll take it. I am past my prime, so I'm not gonna sit here and say I'm not. You know what I mean? That's well, I, did, I didn't mean to word it like that. I just it was the best two minutes, <sighs> James. Before you, you, you opened you, it, you've caused rifts. <laughs> there are now irreparable rifts. Um. Anyway, no, that's actually a really good question. I really <laughs> fucking enjoyed it. Um, and we have Hackensack. Hacksack, I should say. I assume you're from Hackensack. I agree. Maybe 10% of my beers. The rest I drink fresh. I age 10% of my... No, I mean, you can age 100% of your beers depending on what you buy. You know? I try to age beers. So I just drink them too fast. Well, if you, but... if you buy two of everything, you can age 50% of your beers. That's called I would, math. I would, right there. I would That's drink. pretty fucking awesome. Because <laughs> isn't the thing? I know I like I'm not I'm not super strict on that rule because I'll buy something. I'm I'll buy two of something. I'll be like, I'm gonna drink one fresh and age one, and then I buy more beer and completely forget about both of them. If you want to <laughs> well, the best thing you do, and I, honestly, I don't subscribe to this because I don't have the room, I don't have the money. But this is not absolutely the best thing you can do. The best thing you could possibly do is kind of zero in on a beer that you really enjoy. You know, a, a beer that you really enjoy that is ageable. You know, like I always talk about Thomas Hardy Ale that's readily available now, but it's kind of pricey. You know what I mean? Um, JW Leagues, we got, oh, had that one, her, I had that one sent to me by Jordan. Um, today you have all those kind of beers, but take something as simple as Bigfoot, Bigfoot from Sierra Nevada. And again, you know, you're starting to get a little bit of pricier of a beer, but it's a really well done, ageable beer. Find a beer that you really enjoy that you can really age and, you, and it's something that you're like, okay, I like it 
you know, it's it's delicious new. Um, but I wish, you know, I kind of even ten fifty from fucking in a can. We spend so much money on beer. You know, uh, people that are into beer spend so much money. We don't blink an eye in it. Just buy a case of it. Buy a case of that ageable long beer. You know, I mean, for the grand scheme of things, let's talk old stock. New, North Coast old stock is probably my best example of this. You probably get a case right around $100. $100 is a lot of money for me and a lot of other people. Some people not so much. Some people, it's, they can't do it. You're talking about $100 once a fucking year. Buy one case a year and drink one a month. That's all I ask. And do the same thing every year for as long as you possibly can. So let's say you drink, and honestly, you shouldn't drink once a month. And maybe one when you first buy it, and then one maybe in two months, and one maybe in four months. You get what I'm getting at here. And just and then buy. Make sure you buy a case every single time it comes out. Hundred bucks once a year is not that big of a, a wad to spend. If you're going to buy a hundred dollar case of beer, and that's not going to crush you, you could do that once a year. If you do that for like five or six years, and you really don't pay that much mind to it, after five or six years, you're going to have a lot of fucking aged beer. Sure, it's going to be the same brewery. Um, but you know it's a beer that's going to age really, really well. And once you get to that point, you're going to have a lot of, like, beers that you can kind of just have fun with, experiment with. You know what I mean? You talk about five years down the road, you'll have five-year, multiple five-year verticals of uh, of a beer in growing. To the point where once you get five years deep, you're going to be like, if you tried to drink all of them, you'd have a problem. You know, so it, it, to, to it doesn't take much to get there, but once you get there, it starts to snowball. And then once you get like a couple years in, you're like, let me try that with another beer. Maybe spend like 200 bucks a year on another one, whether it be Bigfoot or something like that, something similar. You'd be surprised how how expansive and how how fucking awesome a seller can grow like that. Because, and then you end up, you know, 10 years from now, 20 years from now, let's say you have kids, you know, be like, I bought this beer. When you're born, let's drink a vertical, you know, from when you're born to when you're 21, you know what I mean? That kind of thing. It's fucking cool, man. Like you could do like a lot of cool things and it doesn't take much. It's kind of, it's, it's it, no different than saving for your retirement or saving for whatever, you know, 50 bucks here, 20 bucks there over time kind of fucking makes sense. So it's one of those things where that's, that's what I think of when it comes to fucking Age and beer. Anyway, uh, uh, James chiming in again, again. That was Funlands, Kudos, Schlante, and Skull. So a little bit of a yeah favorite hop. What's your favorite hop? I don't know. <clears throat> it used to be Galaxy, but I don't know what it is anymore because I don't I don't pay attention to that really anymore. My favorite. I don't. I, I'll say this. I don't think it's Galaxy anymore. Okay. It used to be Galaxy, and I don't think it's Galaxy anymore, but I couldn't say specifically. It's a loaded question because I think saying I think saying what's your favorite hop is like saying like what's your favorite aged bottle of beer? So to say this is the best aged bottle of beer or aged vintage. Again, for the sake of familiarity, let's just go with uh, Dogfish 120 and be like, okay, my favorite one is 2009. I could, if I had, if I reached out and I said, I want a bunch of 2009 Dogfish Head um, 2009s, 120 2009s, and I got like 10 of them from 10 different places and had them all here, and then we open up and we drank them all. After we got into the hospital, <laughs> what, what, what we would say is we they were all, they were all different. They were all different. So the same beer, same mall character, same hops, all that night. So beers are different from bottle to bottle. Same thing with hops. You could pick a hop two days apart, and it could be markedly different. So to say I like Galaxy would be like saying, I don't know, man. 
it's weird. It, it, it varies from from place to place and from time to time and from harvest to harvest. All that being yeah. said. Because um, I've had... I'll go new school, old school. I'll go <clears throat> Sabro just because it's so fun. Oh. Sabro's a really fun hop. I dig it. Hop Butcher's been doing it for a couple of years. They've been sending me stuff for a couple of years and I've dug everything that has come from it. Second, so we're doing Tide for first. It would be Fuggles. I love fu- <laughs> Fuggle hops. I love old English hops. Old school yeah. English barley wines, whether it be, again, you know, your Thomas Hardy, your fucking, um, your uh, Harvest Tail, those kind of beers. So go a little old school. A little new school, it is what it is. So, you done. Well, I was just gonna say, as, as um, you said, that was a loaded question because of as far as like aging bottles, I've had bottles that me personally did not take care of. They were in situations that they should have never been in, but I just didn't care because they were beers that I was like, oh, I'm just gonna pour it out eventually anyway. That actually turned out pretty good. And sometimes you get stuff that people are like, I took perfect care of this. It was never above 50 degrees. It was never below 48 degrees or whatever. It and and it's gar- it's hot garbage. <laughs> That's the thing. And, and we said this before. There's no such thing as great vintages. There's such thing as great bottles. We've talked about them before. Yeah. And that was kind of the whole thing I was kind of alluding to earlier. Um, We have Justin chiming in. Always buying two KBS when they drop. I drink one fresh and the other I age for a year. I actually really enjoy uh, KBS aged. There's been a couple of years where we went a little bit sideways. I think 2014 or 15 was a little bit like weird oak tanning, but for the most part, I think that's a great practice. And that's the thing, like when I talked about buying a case and aging it, for as long as you can you can do that on a much smaller scale you know take a four pack and drink one always drink one when you buy it that's the most important thing you possibly do the best thing you do is always buy two and not necessarily saying hey you know uh, spend all your money but drink one fresh especially when it comes to the age variety or even hops man take it uh, you know an ipa drink it uh, um, uh two weeks fresh drink it uh, two months fresh. You know what I mean? You'd be surprised what you end up with. But, you know, buy a four pack, drink one fresh, drink one in six months, drink one in a year, drink one in two years. It's a very, very fun journey. I don't think we buy KBS anymore, though. Well, we can because we can get them whenever we want. It's founders, after. though. Oh, yeah. Fuck those guys. <laughs> Um, anyway, uh, I have a tier, a 20 year old Belgian goose. Would you like to drink it now? Or would you drink it later? Would you drink it now? I would drink it now. You should give it to me. To drink it. No. Uh, goose. So is it goose? Like a normal, uh, like a fancy hoity toity person. Um, it depends on the goose. You know, you're talking about a St. Louis, uh, goose, which is like a basic goose. It's probably past the prime. Probably should drink it. And, you know, we would say, you know, more prominent, well ageable goose. Um, and that's the whole point I was kind of tipping at. Like, what is it? It's not so much should you age goose for 20 plus years or less than 20 years. It's what kind of goose, what vintage goose, who made it, what environment was it made in, how was it kept. So there's a lot of variables that go into it. But 20 years for a goose is going to be. A decent amount of time for it to still be pretty awesome. My suggestion would be to do research and see if anybody else has a vintage that's relatively close to that. If in the perfect world, the same vintage as that and see how it's sitting now. You know, people are like, you know, it's bonkers good right now. It's amazing. It's only getting better. You might want to age longer. If there are people like I had one last week and it was hot garbage. You know, I wouldn't take one person's account on that, but several people and being like, you know, I opened, you know, similar years over the past couple of years and everyone has been bad. You might want to think about, you know, opening it. So you need a little bit of research when it comes to that stuff, especially when you're talking about getting into like double digits, like 20 years old. There's uh, no if and there's no dry yes or no when it comes to that stuff. Also, um, 
one thing I've run into, I don't run into it a lot, but like with age stuff, someone will open a bottle or whatever, and it's it's something they've had fresh, and they'll be like, this bottle sucks. It I aged it too long or whatever, but, but it's like better than you could buy off a shelf at your local liquor store or whatever. Like some people have that <clears throat> uh, perspective. So like a 20 year old Belgian goose, it, like people who can get that regularly. Well, I mean, I guess, I guess I could get that regularly, but uh, like whatever crazy beers, like some people say it's garbage, but it's still really good. Well, that's a, that's just that's a matter <laughs> of taste too. Do you know what I mean? Like when you're talking about aged beers, you know, like a lot of times when I drink like aged beers, like I'll get like you know a ton of oxidation or um, you know things like that, and I'm like, it, it just it brushes off the shoulder because it's like okay, like that's part and parcel with aged yeah. beer. You know what I mean? Like um, I understand I'm gonna get that, and I have no problem with getting that because. I can look past it and get a, get the best parts of what aging beer can do. Um, where some people just aren't familiar with that or choose not to like that or not choose, just don't like that. So it's like, you know, oxidation, wet paper, it, it really turns people off. So if, you know, it, let's put it this way. If playing games of chance and or oxidation aren't, something that you can deal with at all, then aging beer is just not for you. You know what I mean? If you have aging beer, if you age beer and you open two, if you open three bottles in a row and all three of those beers suck and you go and you flip out like this is fucking bullshit and start throwing shit and be like, then you shouldn't age beer, man. <laughs> like that's how it works. Dude, there's been times where I've like, shit, I've aged shit. I'm like, this is going to be fucking the best thing ever. And I bring it out. I'm like, wait till you guys try this shit and pour it out. And it's fucking swamp water. And it's like, oh, yeah, that's fucking trash. Okay, on the next one. That's aging beer. That's aging beer. You can't you can't predict the future, man. <laughs> like, you can try. You can do your best bet. Be like, this age well. It's a predictably ageable beer. You know, we can kind of, mm, you know, this is probably going to be okay. But if you end up with a bunk bottle, it's, you can't be like, I'm going to go back to that place. I bought it back. I bought it from this place. Fuck those guys. Be like, no, you bought age beer, dude. You bought it. That's what age beer is. It's a fucking, it's a fucking crapshoot. It is. It is. It is what it is. Yeah. One more, one more thing. Fucking so good. Go ahead. 90 minute is way better at room temperature. <laughs> Wrestling. I'm I'm drinking it right now. It's it's good. Okay. Keith's to the keep you guys entertained um, for about three minutes. Yeah, he knows what's coming on oh, right now. Geez. I gotta I gotta take a pee. Uh, no, yeah, scoot in, scoot in. Oh. The way you keep on camera. I'm not that uh oh uh, I'm not that skinny anymore. Maybe one I day. Didn't touch it, dude. Maybe one day. Maybe one day when you stop bringing me over here to drink barley wine. <laughs> uh, all right, everybody. This is the part of the show that I'm not good at. Um, I guess we'll go to comments. So as far as a 20-year-old, like Matt said, depends. Ask anybody if they have the same beer, the same vintage. Uh but it depends on the bottle. And what is this? My favorite hop is the one high in free thiols dronial. And uh, those are those are words that I don't know. So basically 90% of American variety is all about the oils. Uh yes. Um I do like uh, this Pilsner has uh, New Zealand hops. I am a fan of those. I am a, a fan of the uh, – I 
forget. So, I forget what they're. I forget what the. I've had beer. I think it was another half beer. Southern Hem Hemisphere hops. Something. I don't know. But those were good. Uh, Rowaka Hill Farms that made me fall in love with that hop. The Rowaka is awesome. But everything from Hill Farmstead is basically... Oh, jeez. Oh, jeez. All right. You guys don't have to deal with me much longer because I'll be dead. <laughs> Why? 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 Dead. D-E-D. Then what are you talking about? Ruaka hops? I yeah. heard it from a distance. Yeah. I don't know if you know, but if you want to go one comment back, I don't know. Ralph, I don't chiming know in. any of those words. You don't pee again. <laughs> God damn. Um, Ralph's chiming in. My favorite hop is um, high in free thelos, grease and all, and aluminum. See what Ralph's doing right here. Ralph is one of the best dudes in the history of mankind, but he is a brewer, so he's throwing out all these brewer terms. And not a lot of us beer drinkers know. So basically 90% of American varietals, all about the oils. So that's what Ralph's saying right there. So don't let it get a little bit intimidated. You'll be all right. Uh, Rock, Rewaka, Justin chiming in. I think that was what Keith was talking about before he left. Hill Farm said made me fall in love with that hump. Jay Porter, that's what we're talking. Now Sorry about that, guys. I don't know what happened there. Probably me. I probably fucked something up. Um, you do. I leave you alone for one no, minute. I'm just kicked out. It's your fault. Anyway, uh, Hack Attack is a Goose Boom Black Label. Red online can age. Red online can age for years. Well, I mean, twenty years yeah. is quite some time. So we'll see what's what. Um, uh, uh, James chiming in from Rampant Lion Beer Review, saying Slovenia has some beautiful hops these days. Steering, steering, steering. I think it's steering. Steering. That's. I it. think so. He's right. I'm right. <laughs> um, Dragon. A few others. Man, words are hard. Um, they are. And I had a 2018 Hardy that was highly solventing harsh. Uh, if I brought it, uh, if I bought it again, how long should I eat it? Unfortunately, it was a drain port. That sounds like a bad bottle. It, no, that's a thing or though. It's or it's, just people who don't. No, it's. I think that's a. I'm biased when it comes to Hardee's because I love them so much. So even newer ones can be what he's talking about. You know what I mean? Like being oh, harsh, be. kind of like the 120. You know what I mean? Like the 120, you wouldn't say it was far off from that. You know what I mean? Oh, as far as like, the alcohol goes. Well, well, you're talking about solvent. You're talking about solvent. You're talking about oh, cleaning. Okay. You know what I mean? Those kind of things. But here's the thing. And this is where it comes. Uh, what's what's hardy? Eleven percent ish. It can change? vary. It can oh. vary from year to year. But it, here's the thing, like, and this is where bias comes in, and from preconceived notion or what or history comes in. I can drink a hardy, a newer hardy. What does that taste like now? He's supposed to drink it all. Malt um, water. Yeah. <laughs> Um, <laughs> he, uh, if you, I'm trying to like encapsulate it the way, best way I can. So Hardee's, I love Hardy. I know what it can be. Sometimes when I drink the newer ones, I get a little bit lost in what it can be. So I'll drink it and it will be harsh. It will be solvent -y. It will be a little bit not, <laughs> or a lot not in its prime. But I can still cherry pick positives out of it and be like, I, it, you've heard this a lot in my reviews. If you actually go back, back and watch it, I'll talk about the beer and be like, I don't think it's amazing now, but I can taste what it's going to be. And that's kind of where that kind of preconceived notion, that history with the beer comes in. 
I think it'd be like, there's some beers where I can taste it, like an American barley wine, an English barley wine, or an old ale, and I can taste it and be like, this is not going to age well. This is just not going to get there. It's just the way it tastes, the way it comes off, the acidity levels, the kind of, uh, the way the malt comes off, I just, I really don't think it's going to get there. When I taste a fresh hearty, I'm like, you know, it's a bit harsh. It's, it, it, it's a little bit too much. But I know it's going to get there. I can just taste how it's going to get there. And that's kind of that bias that kind of comes up with that. So you're talking about 2018 Hardy. I can find a lot of good things in that beer. Is the beer a great beer? No, I don't think I've ever said it is a great beer. But the one I did, the one I thought was pretty fantastic with a little bit of time on it. More often than not, it's me pining over age. Um so if you like, and here's where the kind of most important portion of the show is, you have to understand that do you like aged beer? Do you like aged barley wine? Don't go in this being like, oh, I only love New England style IPAs. And <laughs> no, and, and no, it's not even a thing. Keith is laughing. And it, 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 but it's like, if you <laughs> only like New England style IPAs, and you know pastry stouts. You don't age, age beer. barley wines nor each barley wines might not be your jam. I'm not saying that's the case, but you also have to, have to understand what um, what do I appreciate? If you do appreciate old aged beer, then waiting on a hearty is not just a good thing, but a spiritual thing. You know what I mean? Like, and that's the thing I have to like kind of click back to is saying like, there's really not much better than aging a beer for like a fucking crazy long time and drinking it, enjoying it. Like, like you could drink a beer, you know, and be like, okay, I bought, I bought this 10 year old beer and it's fantastic. And that's great. But if you age a beer for 15 years, and it's even halfway decent. There's some kind of weird euphoric kind of like, I aged this beer for 15 fucking years myself. I bought this beer fresh. I aged it. I took care of it. It's like nurturing a fucking baby. You know what I mean? And like, I drank it. And even if it's halfway decent, you'll fucking love it. If it's fucking like high splitting bonkers delicious you're just like that's when the addiction comes in you're like okay now i'm fucking aging everything and everything's gonna i don't care i'm gonna buy cases of everything and that's where people fall in the fucking kind of the pitfall and then once you have once you age a beer for 10 years and it's it's mind-numbingly fucking awesome mind-numbingly fucking awesome and then you experience that and then you're just like that's the high that's the high you chase it's like crack or heroin or fentanyl all that shit that people do nowadays you're just like i want to age beer and i want to find that beer again and we're gonna do it and you're just like okay odds are in my favor if i do it with all the beers so then you're like let me buy a case of these 80 beers a year and i'll do it with the same 80 beers a year and then you open a bottle shop and you become a millionaire that's how it works yeah, it's called science. But no, no, seriously. Um, Fresh Hardy is not a fantastic beer. It is absolutely fantastic. Eight to ten years old. So that's what I think you should do. Anyway, next up, Hack is Zach saying, LOL, I'm drinking it now. You guys make a logic point. I don't know how we ended up there, but apparently we made oh, sense. When's he, when's he stopping by? Yeah. We're drinking it, right? Yeah. We're drinking yeah. it now? Drinking <laughs> yes. Um, we have Ralph chiming in. Uh, if you had to pick Hardy's or JP Hardy's all fucking day, dude, it's not even a fucking contest. It's not like uh, for me, for me, it's not a contest because Hardy's has a couple things going for it. One, it's a first love. It's, it's like the one that broke me into loving used barley wine. And not only that, but it was one of the best ever. So it's like uh, I got lucky in that sense, but uh, it's also a, 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 a. We talked about it earlier. We talked about out water and clown shoes. I've had like hardies that have been like 
skull crushingly fantastic and i've had hardies that are super disappointing i've had lees that were super fucking good and super bad but never the high or the low that hardies gave me that's the thing like it's 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 picking hairs i mean honestly we're gonna open another one we're gonna open that one fucking jordan set i, I will right. say i had a um uh the ready readily available uh Hardy's, mm -hmm. the, I think it's 2017, mm -hmm. <clears throat> and it was unlike a barley wine that I've had before. In what way? It was smooth. It was bitter, but it was smooth. Like a lot of the barley wines I've had are like bitter, and the and uh, I don't know. It was it was good. I'm saying it's good. Um, and I could see that. I can see why you like it so much. That was my first one. It was my first one. That was your first one? Yeah. You never mm. opened one with me. We're going to have to get an old one. And then here's the thing. And this is where, like, kind of recency bias kind of comes into effect. Hardy's was made from, you know, to 1963 to 2008. And it was brought back in 2016. Really didn't come back till 2017. And really didn't come in full force here till 2018. JW Lee's 19, what do I have up here? 1997. I have a 97 up there. You know, right around that time. And just run the gamut. Like it's not gonna weigh. So if you said what's easier to find, a Hardy Did or a J no, that's not true. What? What's what's easier to find a Hardy or JW Lee's? I can find a Hardy with, right now today. I can find a Hardy easier, but it's going to be an eighteen or nineteen. If you said um, if I could, what kind of JW Lee's could you find? It'd be slightly less. I can still find. I know we're exactly to get Wait, all of them, but if what? I if I want to find a JW Lee's, I can find them, and I can get back into the two thousand ones. Yeah. You know what I mean? So that's the big difference with these. Where do you find the eighteens and nineteens? I've only been finding the seventeens. Hardies? Yeah. Uh, maybe it's seventeen, eighteen. I. Uh, what's the name of the place? The Bourbon Street Liquors on I mean, thirty one. Close to that brewery you went to, that sunken silo. The one you know, one right when you yeah, cross yeah, 22, yeah. it's right there. They have like a rack of them, or there's it's called Little Brothers in Flemington. They actually have like a gift pack of parties <laughs> where you get a glass and a couple bottles and shit oh. like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah so, so you can find them, but. I can find a couple, one or two years of Hardy's newer, and I can probably find them a little bit easier than JW Lee's, but I can find, like, if you said right now, I challenge you to find a vertical of JW Lee's from 01 to 15, I think I could do it. I could be back here tomorrow with a relatively full That's what vertical. I'm saying. Like, I could do that. <laughs> If you said find me a vertical of Thomas Hardy from 01 to 08, it would take me a couple of years and like a lot of fucking money. <laughs> like it would take a lot of money and a lot and like a year or two to accomplish that vertical. So that's kind of where that kind of lies. So it's it's not you know apples and apples kind of thing. It's a little bit different. Um and then you're talking about Logan Neff. I want to say Jeff, but Neff. <laughs> Ron and Rod. Uh, anyway, <laughs> Jenny Lee's 2012 Harvest was awesome. Listen, the best, the best. Let's shake that camera as much as we can. The best, the best <laughs> um, JW Lee's I have ever had. I think I posted a review of it. I was very, very tipsy. I think it was um, oh, oh, 07, oh, 08. They're called not Calvados Lagavulin cask. Lagavulin cask. Let's see what it is. Let's see if we can find it real quick. 
Uh, Log of old Excuse cask me. of fucking JW Lee's. Oh my god, that was so good. So I, I'll give you a little backstory on that one. Um, I was. God damn it! I hate to do YouTube so bad. What's I I did I post it? I gotta see if I. I don't know if I ever put. Oh, that that that. I uploaded it, but never posted it. That's how drunk I was. <laughs> so, yeah. The, what is this? Oh, here we go. <laughs> Look how drunk that guy is. Uh, this is a 2004 Lagavulin cask. The camera's all fucked up. Like, I'm wearing an Arsenal jersey. Everything's fucking... Uh, I mean, look at that guy. I mean, I am rip shit drunk. So, <laughs> anyway. So, it was a 2004 Lagavulin cask. Of JW Lee, so we were talking about 2015. So this is you know November 2015. So it's four and a, four years ago, essentially. Um, and that beer was awesome. I went to a, um, a local uh, fireman's picnic before this, <laughs> and and I went there also After. doing several reviews beforehand. <laughs> <laughs> and went there and ate all the potato pancakes and pierogies they had. And I understand what you thought right now, that I ate a lot of potato pancakes and pierogies. <laughs> but no, I ate all of the pancakes and pierogies <laughs> they had. All of them. And then I came back and ate them. And with my buddy Brad, you've met him before, and uh, you know, I was like, we're going to do a review. And he's like, I brought a beer with me. <laughs> my buddy Brad, and he's like, oh, I, have a, I have a 2004... Lagavulin fucking cask JW Lee's and I might not have been in my best mindset for that beer review. But here's the thing, and this is where it comes in. I think it makes sense. I was hammered and it was fucking amazing. <laughs> I mean, I, I, some people are like, no, is shit, it, is it, yeah, I think it's it? harder for shit to be amazing when you're hammered. I do think that's the case. You don't think so? No. Keith's never been hammered before, so I don't know. <laughs> it's because I go to. I love the fact that I go to out there, but no one's ever seen it. I, we got two, watch, two we gotta, views. We have to watch that later. Two views <laughs> from two thousand. Here, no, can, wait. I can do that. Can I do that? I can share a screen. <laughs> uh. Let's do this. You guys want to see a review of me and Brad rip shit? Let's do it. How do you do it? I don't know. This is something I see. These YouTube things are very, very hard. Maybe we do it like this. The fuck was that? <laughs> It looks like it's streaming. See, it does yeah. that weird thing. I have no idea how to do this. We'll try to do it another time when I'm... <laughs> I'm the worst. I'm the worst with oh, shit. Stop sharing thing right down here. Yeah. I tried to do that, but I'll <laughs> post it for you guys. Of me going bonkers over fucking whatever. <laughs> it's it's technology. I'm, I'm old. I'm gray. Look at this shit. I'm like a grandpa when it comes to this stuff, so... You know, it is what it is. So. Anyway. Anyway. So we should drink this. Oh. And then we should drink oh, that. I that. completely forgot about that. Yeah, we should drink that and then we should go. Because. 
Thanks. I for, think people are, I mean, we, you know, people are watching, but for ethical reasons. Yeah. <laughs> who else is in there? Logan, Logan Neff. It's the last on there. So I think people are, people are reaching their peak. Peak. Do you want to talk about it? So I don't feel bad drinking this. Um, this is 2001 Harvest Sale from, um, I th- will say right here. I think I could get you another we'll go like one. that. Oh shit, Jordan from Pittsburgh. That's the thing. I don't feel bad yeah, because I think I can not diminish what Jordan sent off. Um, if you watched the uh, unboxing that I did just before actually posting this video, um, Jordan sent me the 2013 uh, 120 that we did. He sent me two cans, a beer, a veil beer. And a strange roots hazy he sent me to 120 and he sent me this. And I think I can get this. Like, not I don't think I can get this and get this again. So I don't feel bad bringing <clears throat> it on air. And I think we did we drink like a 2003 or four or something like that yeah. on one of the last ones we did. I no, I did bring a couple over because mm-hmm. I found a 2000 and worse for the pirates, by the way. So Go Bucks. I'm a Yankees fan. Fuck the Astros. They're cheaters and they're pieces of shit. And fuck those guys. And they're stupid asses for fucking cheating everybody about everything. Altuve's a hot piece of garbage. Carrera is even worse now that he's defending him. Fucking. They should be fucking banned from fucking baseball. The Astros should be fucking dismantled <laughs> as a club. For fucking several years, fuck those guys. Like it's not even like people are like being nice to them. And Carrera is out today, like saying like, "Ah, oh, fucking Altuve is fine. Like he never did that shit. He had a tattoo on his chest. He didn't want to fuck those dudes. Fuck them. Fuck them and their stupid asses." Sorry about doing that. I don't but, know what you're talking about. No <laughs> baseball. Fuck those guys. Like seriously, they're the worst thing. Like this is. And not as bad as the Black Sox, but like literally, like just not as bad. Like inkling, not as bad. The Astros suck. The whole fucking club sucks. Every one of their players can fucking go fuck themselves. Like it's like you have no idea, dude, what happened. Like I, I wouldn't no justify idea. it to you because it would take I like know. five hours. But fuck them anyway. So go Bucks. <laughs> Go Bucks, go Yankees, and go Yankees over Bucks. Anyway, so down to thirteen. People are like fuck this guy. <laughs> anyway, so we'll do this one. She had separate glasses. Make more sense. Do you have more out there? I'm go grab a yeah, couple. Go grab. I'm trying to get two it, two of the same size. Is there? Is there a certain glass style you like? Actually, yeah. In the, the main cabinet, mm-hmm. in the center, just off to the left, middle shelf, there's like glasses that look like beakers from like a science science test. It's like towards the back a little bit on the left hand side from the center. Okay. Yeah. You know, all scientific on this shit. Anyway, so let's actually jump back in the comments real quick. We have Ralph t- saying, I can talk my ass off, but most people watch watching would just be confused or afraid. Although I will give you credit for delivering into brewing topics in your reviews without sounding like an ass. Well, I'm going to stop you right there, Ralph. I definitely sound like an ass. But some for some bonkers weirdo reason, people actually like my asshole mouth and... I kind of appreciate that. So thank you very much, brother. Michael Gibson said, what is your take on the secondary market prices becoming regular market prices? Crap beer brewing podcast had an episode with side project about how they felt about secondary. Honestly, Mike, uh, you can go back to podcasts I did like two years ago. I've talked about this ad nauseum. I think secondary market is the worst thing ever to happen. In beer, and I also think that breweries adopting the secondary market to price their beers was going to be a problem 
two, three years ago. So if you go back to some of the, um, some of the, uh, if you actually better, better than go back to some of the podcasts I did. If you actually look into some of the old YouTube videos I did, I did no, they actually look like beakers. Like they actually have graduated lines on them and they look like, um, that's fine. No, you can drink out of those. Nah, just come in. That's good. Um, yeah. Let's grab these. Um, there's like 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 two years ago, I was like hammering on this shit, going like flipping out, going like this is bullshit. I hate it. I understand why breweries are doing it because they have to. Um, but it's, we're the only people to blame. I don't, that's <laughs> another. That's another topic that came up yeah, yesterday yeah. when I was in the and people like they were talking about like, oh yeah, this bottle went for fifteen hundred dollars. <laughs> but it's like, like it's like the beer consumer. Listen, supply and demand. I don't, I don't you, want to you I don't set want to. the market. You set the market. So if you if you're buying something from a company, it doesn't matter if it's beer or whatever. If you're buying it for five bucks and selling it for five hundred. Eventually, the people that are selling it going, wait a minute, why the fuck should we be selling this for five bucks? We should be selling this for five hundred. If everybody just pumped the brakes, oh, you mean like uh, yeah, secondary top, market toppling Goliath? Yeah, selling pores for like, or you whatever. Can't, it was. You can't fault oh. them. For, the only reason toppling Goliath did that was because of the people that buy their beer. If they like, if if like some brewery that was never heard of was like, we're gonna charge nine hundred dollars a bottle, and people are like, go fuck yourself. But here's the thing: the people that buy those beers, like buy those like secondary beers, and like spend that much money they're the reason why the market is where it is so people need to control themselves man but you know i don't want to say this because it might alienate some people I'm, but the problem is uh, fucking white collar money man you know new, new money i, you I know feel I mean? like and i feel like in some instances i'm just thinking about this now i feel like in some instances those people could spend less money and just take a fucking plane and go to the release. <laughs> why would they? That's why they have all that money. Yeah. It's like, it's like, well, yeah, it's like, it's like sweetbreads. That's true. It's like sweetbreads. Like you pay, you basically pay an extra couple bucks. Yeah. To it's not like, why, why, have why, why, to worry why, about it. Yeah. It's like, it, you know, <clears> it's like, it's like chitlins. It's like sweetbreads. It's like fucking, it's like bone marrow. You know what I mean? Like that's like, that's like bullshit for years. You're gonna eat fucking sweetbreads, you're gonna eat fucking chitlins, you're gonna eat fucking bone marrow. That shit's delicious, but people don't fuck with that shit. So it's pennies on the dollar. Now you go in a restaurant, someone's like, oh, you know, I'll charge you fucking 25 bucks for a plate of bread and some sweetbreads, or fucking here's some bone marrow for fucking 45 bucks a fucking a plate. And it's like, you're charging me like, crazy prices for like basic like shit that i had to eat as a kid you know what i mean it, it's crazy so it's the same way with beer and that the way that price point the the you know the the uh, 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 <laughs> no what? no do you know what i mean no no <laughs> i don't know what that means no. <laughs> words but it's like one of those things where it's like that was what you drank and that was what it's worth. But now like people that coming in with like exuberant amounts of money. I know some of these oh, people. Yeah. There's some people in the NAPA group that live like that, yeah. that are just like, you know, have like an, it, like an unlimited amount of money. And it's like, those are the people that set the price point now. I don't get too pissed off at the breweries unless they pull the, pull the whole thing we were talking about earlier because you know, and it's what it is. It's market value. What the top and Goliath thing? Yeah, they, I mean, who, what are they supposed to do? Release it for five bucks and have everybody else. What was it? Wasn't market? it like twelve ounce bottles, like one per person, and it's a hundred dollars a bottle or whatever? Yeah, was but that, was that top and Goliath? I, I think I so, but it doesn't matter because yeah. it's it's it, it, it's the spirit of it. Or I think it was fifty bucks for a twelve ounce bottle. And it was whatever per person, but but the point was, is, if they if a brewery says 
this is a hundred dollars a 12 ounce bottle come and get it it's up to us to say no but the pe the people who have so much disposable income will say eh, i don't give a fuck i'll do it and then that sets the market and then everybody else is fucked it's Rage Against the Machine. I know you posted the other posted yesterday oh, yeah. about Rage Rage Against the Machine. Yep. About how their tickets were 125 bucks, but they ballooned the, to 300, 400 bucks because of scalpers. Yeah. But is even 125 bucks legit? I don't think all the tickets were 125 dollars. I think the I think the article was a little misleading. I think the most expensive ticket was $125 aside from 10% of the seats or 10% of the tickets that they set aside to sell for higher than 125 with the difference going to charities. And basically scalpers, whoever bought basically instantaneously with like the bots yeah. and that they can set up, bought all the tickets and now you can't find a ticket for less than like three or four hundred dollars. Mm -hmm. And it's the it's same <laughs> exact fucking thing, dude. It's literally the same exact thing. And here's the thing: like, you know, I grew up raging against the machine. And I understand the frustration. And I understand that they're trying a lot of people are bashing them. I have no problem with it. But it's like here's the other flip the script. Where I am right now in my life. And how I live, I have no problem being 125 bucks, dude. If someone said pay 125 bucks, you get to see a Rage Against the Machine and have an awesome night, I'm okay with it. But 23 year old me would not be able to pay that money. You know what I mean? So what are they trying to do? Like where are they? At? I understand the costs involved with throwing a concert, not just throwing a concert, but throwing a concert of that magnitude. You know what I mean? Yeah. So sound, there are sound also people. You know what I mean? Like everything at Bill Vault, that's 125 bucks is actually cheap. Like, I, uh, you know, really cheap when it comes to the, like, you want to see like a big, decently big artist, like 250 bucks is like the brass tax. You're, really, you're nice. really trying to turn this thing into a political podcast, aren't you? No, 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 no. But I'm, <laughs> no, I'm just trying to. Well, no, but it goes like there's, there's like a lot of underlying things to that yeah. as well. But, uh, also, I think I think they're playing like way they're playing they're touring with Run the Jewels, so I think they're they're playing like way bigger bigger places than they usually play or used to play. Let me let <clears throat> let me clue you in. If you want to go to Rage Against the Machine, you can sneak in that shit. I've pretty much gotten every concert I've ever <laughs> wanted to go to for free. <laughs> Don't pay that price. Get in there, fucking bully yourself into that fucking concert. You can do it if you have Jesus in your heart. You'll get in there. No, I, I, if you have an Easter bunny in your heart, you'll get in there. Anyway, um, <laughs> let's just fuck everybody up in this fucking podcast. <laughs> anyway, I think we need right. to drink this JWEs and sign off before it gets even worse. <laughs> you mean it before it gets before it gets too good? Before, before it, it gets, gets the bestest, <laughs> the bestest of the rest of us. Before it gets. Uh, Deserving of a paywall. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> no hiss. No hiss. You pour that. I'll go over comments. Don't pour it like an asshole, though. All right. So just pour the whole bottle into my glass and give you like this. Just go like that. <laughs> Let's see what we have there. Hacksack was talking about Port Cast from JW Lee's being his favorite. That's fucking awesome. Talked about secondary. Well, these glasses are two different sizes. Yeah. They're well, like the same glass, but they're two different sizes. Perhaps no. talking about funky boot and Buddha flooding the market but back in the day. I actually don't know anything about that. So that would be nice to know more. Chime in, Ralph. Um, and uh, anyway, Logan Neff is saying, I'm homebrew a good bit, and I'm also also work Monday night. I've seen your review homebrew before. Were there any, any way for me to send you some homebrew to review? Yes, you could. Massabeers at gmail.com. Just email me, man. Um, 
if you want to see homebrew stuff, I'd love to do homebrew stuff. I was trying to do a homebrew Wednesday. I had a couple, you know, people send me homebrew, but it's kind of fall to the wayside. But I would love to exclusively do Wednesdays for homebrew. <laughs> so we'll see what's what. What homebrew Wednesdays for all who want it. Yeah. <laughs> that's a Pete all Buttigieg. The that's, what? A, that's a Pete Buttigieg joke. What the fuck is that? Because he's a. Uh... He's running for Medicare for all, for those who want it. I have no <laughs> idea what he's talking about right now. Anyway, um, yeah, massivebeers at gmail.com or on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Grinder, fucking uh, Friendster, ICQ, uh, fucking MySpace, GeoCities, and, um, and uh, what's the last one? Angel Fire. There you go. Oh, oh. I think I had a. I give you a little more. Good news. That's that's horrible. Can I dump this out somewhere? It it smells like coffee. It smells like it does not smell like coffee. It smells like it's, sm the, it's bitter. Coffee the liqueur. bitter. The bitter. Oh well, no. It's I'm talking about. I'm just talking about. No, it's like like. There's like a bitter coffee with like a caramel, whatever. I'm better at these things than I am with like IPAs. Like I can't get. Like you're talking about all the like the fucking things in IPAs. I'm like, I don't. I don't. You say that, I'm like, oh yeah. But like with this, I can. There's like a bitter coffee. Like you ever make coffee in a French press and then it just leave like it there for a while and then you smell it and it just like it's like super bitter. You ever eat a, you ever eat a score bar? No. A what? Score. No. It smells it smells like what a score bar tastes like. So there's like this weird. It's, it's like English. Coffee. There was this weird English toffee, um, like bar, like that my mom used to drink. Eat the, um, it was like a candy, oh, actually, but it was actually. like super compressed. Like it was like uh, oh, oh yeah, it. I've seen those. Yeah, yeah. And um, it's like I don't think I've ever had one, but no, yeah, I know you would you know. Have. You ever have toffee? Like yeah. uh, like brittle? Yeah, brittle is like crack. Yeah. Okay, think about that, but then mix with the Milky Way, so it's like somewhere in between. Like it's like super hard. Oh, like, actually. I might have had one of those, but in my youth that I don't remember. In your youth? Youth. youth. My youth. Youth. Yeah. Cheers. There's a huge molasses thing in here, by the way. Really? You flesh. It tastes like molasses. Mm. Tastes like molasses and um, doesn't taste like coffee. I think the the bitterness with the molasses was just giving making me think coffee. Oh, it's so good. It's 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 that score bar I was talking about. It's like it's like think about like it's way sweet though. It's like way sweet. Yeah. I mean, in the most beautiful way possible. Um I mean, think about all all those candy bars you had as your parents had as a kid and you grew up with not Reese's, not Hershey's. Talk about like um, nougat based stuff, like score bar, like talk about Toblerone, talk about like all those, all those candy bars, treacle, oh, treacle, I'm molasses, them. like, like, like homemade oh. kind of candies. What is that? Oh, uh, that. Have you ever had the Aero Bars? Your bear Aero Bars? That's what this tastes like. This is like they're like delicious. It's, it's chocolate. Take a sip. Take a sip, and then once you actually swallow it, the amount of like powdery kind of chocolate you get on a swallow, like it kind of like all that goes away, and you get this like rich powdery chocolate. That's what the arrow bars are. It's like yeah. there's like it's like a bar, but there's like air pockets in it. So like when you bite into it, it like it's like powdery ish. 
That's exactly what it is. That's <laughs> what we're we're ta- we're talking the same language here. <laughs> yeah. yeah. No, that's fucking awesome. I mean, that's like this is my we this is like beer to me. Like way more way more beer. And then uh, like Keith's trying to squeeze like three ounces, or not even three <laughs> yeah, ounces, like point right. zero zero three <laughs> ounces of that sucker. But this is kind of what like where beer lies for me. Like when it comes down to like, what's my favorite? Like, is this beer? Is that beer? Like, is this? This is probably the oldest beer I've had in your life. Yeah. Good on you, Jordan. 19 years. Mm. It's like Gouda water. Merc. And it's very similar. Like if you actually so is this, this a, up, like the same uh, well, this one twenty is lighter, but it's not like markedly lighter. I mean it, on the camera, I don't think it does it justice. But yeah. so is this considered a barley wine? Because this is, it says strong ale on here. I think, um, I think J.W. Lee's classifies the Harvest sale as an old ale. So traditionally, old ales are open fermented. So if you talk about Yorkshire Stingo from Sam Smith's, it's like an open fermented kind of old ale. So you can get a lot of like subtle sour notes from it, things like that. That's where I think Harvest Tail actually classifies their beer at. It could be wrong, but knee jerk memory. Is it open? Because wouldn't those, like, even a slight soured stuff, like, wouldn't that no. exacerbate? No, because, no, like, a lot of your. Aging. A lot, no, a lot of your clean Kolsch's lager stuff like that came from open fermented beers from back in the day. It just happened to happen in cold temperature. So oh. where you have Saccharomyces doing its thing and oh, having okay. a lot of other funky stuff show up. That, so it's it's a matter of environment at that place. Um, Ralph yeah. chiming in. People getting crazy on maple coffee. Porter. Crazy prices. People, you should get it at your at their festival. So whatever. Words. Um, <laughs> I, won't for, I won't pay for a beer over $50. That's my line. I don't know. It's kind of a weird <clears throat> line to make, you know. Um, like, I'm not that I would pay fifty bucks for a beer all the time, but there's something I'd definitely be like, it, okay, I'm okay with that. It'd be I, very few and far between, but yeah. I mean, I entered, I I put myself in the lottery for uh, Hill Farmstead's Flora Cuvée or whatever, and, and pay- that's eighty. I think the bottles are eighty-two and change with tax or whatever. I'm okay with paying that. And then Peter <laughs> Easton chimes in saying butterscotch, son. Uh, butterscotch. It's this, way beyond butterscotch. Yeah. yeah. This is molasses and powdered chocolate. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. There there's way more to it than that. Like I'm like not to say there's not butterscotch vibes to it. You know what I mean? But a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. Way more beer. Actually, as it warms up, yes. Yeah. yeah. But when, yeah. Yeah. now yeah. all I can taste is butterscotch. You put it in my head, and now all that's all that's Fuck it is. up, Peter. <laughs> Fuck it up. Okay, we're done. So hopefully you guys enjoyed the uh, live stream. Um, yeah, it was fun. We had a blast. Hopefully you enjoy um, watching, re-watching this, us huh. having a Fun time drinking 120s and all. And we're like, yeah, oh my least. god, we have to drink 120. And we're like, ah, barley wine this, barley wine that. <laughs> we'll drink all the barley wine. So hopefully you guys enjoyed that. <laughs> hopefully you're drinking some new beer or aged beer. Yeah. Well, hopefully you're drinking or some, something. Or some weird hybrid like this. Yeah. Something, <laughs> something fun. Reach out. Try something new. And uh, we'll see what's what. Next up, I have no idea. What do you guys want to drink? Um, probably, uh, oh, do you want to talk about the... the oh, yeah, uh, we yeah. should do that. Uh, before we before we finish this, what are we going to do? We are going to do... Um, I found at a local bottle shop to me a, uh, a box set of three uh, 
Gudin Carlos, uh, Cuvée Van the Kaiser Blau, the Kaiser, yeah, the Blues, yeah, the Blues. <clears throat> it included a uh, two thousand or uh, two thousand or two thousand one. A 2007 and a 2016. So we are going to try and find a uh, a fresh one as well. I didn't see any fresh ones. I saw a 2018 today, but anyway. Um, so we're going to try and find a a relatively fresh one as well, and we are going to drink those. And, and get you see, you <laughs> see what happens. <laughs> Keith's trying to say, so we're going to do a video outside of this kind of thing. If you want to drink along, you're more than welcome to do it. But we're going to do um, one of my favorite beers of all time. Um, Guten Carlos is their Hent Anchor. Um, uh, Guten Carlos Kaiser Blau, Von de Kaiser Blau, which is their blue version. It's uh, basically a Belgian dark. For me, it skews more Belgian quad, a little bit more robust, but it's a two thousand. We're going to be not a two thousand one. The uh, the pack he got was a what was it? Two thousand, two thousand, two thousand seven, two thousand sixteen. Yes, we're going to try to find a <coughs> newer version. Uh, so we're yeah. do a four way minimum three way, um, hopefully four way vertical. Do you know that? The do you know if the U.S. gets them relatively quickly? Because they do. Because the new one, the they release them every February what twenty yeah, fourth, so twenty fourth. So they're coming out in a we week. We won't get that because we're going to do that in like a week or two. So yeah, we're going to be fine. But um, well, that's why I was saying, do they do we get them relatively quickly? Because well, if we do that three bottle uh, vertical, or otherwise, we'll have fun. So, oh yeah, yeah, we're gonna do another one of these bottle shares soonish, probably in about a month or so. You guys are gonna vote on that. I have no idea what I want to do. Um, Matter light, Coors Light, or Bud Light? We do loggers. <laughs> I mean, it's up to you guys. Like you guys choose this. So anyway, in the comment section of this video, not in the chat section we're in right now in the comment yeah. section let me know what what beers you guys want to like have a share and hang out and drink along with us we'll have a good time and just sit around and drink beers and chew shit like we did right now let us know what's what it could be anything adjunct lager micro lager um big imperial stouts belgians whatever we're gonna do that it'll be about a month from now so you guys let us know what you want to drink. I'll take all those suggestions, kind of whittle it down to what's what, come up with a theme, let you guys vote on it, and then we'll do the same thing we're doing right now. Now, between that happening, we're going to do that Guten Carlos, Guten von Kaiser Blau vertical. We're going to do that actually the same thing we're doing now. This is like a streaming online if you guys want to join that. And on that, you're more than welcome to go find it, but we're not going to pigeonhole people into actually having to go get those out there and stuff like that. So that'll be in a week or two. We'll do a lot of stuff. I'll put an announcement out. So anyway, it was a really good time. Uh, you know, the yeah. 120 was fantastic. 60 blew us away. I think yeah. 60 was kind of like way better than what we thought it was. It was a be. sleeper. Yeah, sleeper. <laughs> sleeper hit. Uh, 90, it's beer. Um, but yeah, super fun time. So. Thank you very much, guys, for hanging out and having a good time. Um, before we leave here, I actually just want to click on Pete right here going, how did Arsenal do today, big fella? For nothing is what they did. He already knew that. You <laughs> fucking know that. Um, yeah, fucking back, son. Um, and uh, hopefully you guys had a good time hanging out and um, drinking some beers. It's always a good time. Hopefully you guys... Join us for the next one. That would be pretty good. Hopefully you shop at 93 Lumber. Keith needs those ducats to keep his uh, keep his uh, head afloat. Anyway, regardless of bullshit. Thank you very much for coming by, guy. guys. 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 Vote. Goose. Goose. A goose. Oh, uh, goose. 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 <laughs> and uh, <laughs> hopefully you guys enjoyed the time. Hopefully you uh, vote on the next beer. Hopefully you're 
drinking some something good right now. Let's see if I can get my mouse up there. Hopefully wait, next time. Wait. Click on that last comment. Yeah. Cheers, guys. Pierce. <laughs>